Hello, everybody. I think I am about ready to get started. Let's chat a little first. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of changes, I think, over the next couple days. Some of them happening in PSO, some of them happening on the screen. I was just noticing I still had the, uh, the Twitter icon in the upper left. I was going to say, I should... I'll, I'll be taking that down at some point. <laughs> I think the update there will be a bit later. We'll save that story for a little bit as people trickle in, but yeah. Needless to say, don't don't expect any more updates there. There hasn't been updates there for a while, but definitely don't expect any now. So what we're going to do today, there's a new add-on for Affinia that I've been playing a little bit with off-stream since it was brought up in the last session. And I think it's actually really good, so I wanted to just kind of show it off in this one. Do some quests that potentially have tons of items, showcase how it looks. I'm still in the process of fine-tuning it. And in addition, there's also an advanced config file, which probably won't do anything for a while, but it'll be a nice little, little hidden bonus for people paying attention to the stream. Or it'll crash my game, one of the above. You know how those things go when you mess with config files. I guess we'll see how it goes in this session. For those wondering, we're still in the Yuzo Kozuhiro soundtrack hour. We are still somehow on, I believe it's called, the Seventh Dragon. That soundtrack is 77 songs. We are on like the final five, if I look correctly at that list. So let's see. Always gotta check the beat. Ah, it is even B. Welcome in Parameter. I was gonna say in Parameter, you're here. I'm thinking, did you want to do some runs in Parameter? Otherwise, I'll just do some solo stuff for a little bit. I was gonna say, it is, it is the pew pew hour, as it were. I'll bring in a force. Oh my gosh, I actually went to the right character bank. That That's more impressive to me. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I was like, okay, which of my many characters is my yellow ID force? I've been practicing this with uh, Chris off stream. I've been testing different thresholds for HP materials. I've been very ha happy at it, like exactly 50 auto phonumen. I'll go ahead and make the game. The parameter could bring in Ron Marl, could bring in Cass, whatever you want. Four forces. Doesn't really matter. The only thing I think that I want is another Adept. So we won't see some of the advanced config stuff right away. Yeah, because that involves me playing an ATP character. So basically, I, I guess little spoiler here or there, uh, you are given the ability to modify text in the game. Now one of the things I modified should show up while we play as a force, but the other requires me to swing certain weapons and or use certain specials, which forces are not very much known to do. There's a whole bunch of options in the advanced config file that they just released. Most of them are super relevant, like, mostly particle effects. I guess it's kind of interesting that you can change how the minimap looks a little bit. So for example, I can change technically the colors of the players, for example. You can also choose whether or not to make the minimap more transparent, which is kind of interesting. But otherwise, I don't know. I don't really have this big fascination with touching the minimap. Now, game text, on the other hand, oh, that's that's a different story. Yeah, we'll be seeing one of the game changes at some point. We'll give people some time to trickle in. Okay, I was just making sure I actually had like fluids and things on me to go. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. We could talk a little bit about changes, I guess, since we're in some downtime as we wait for people to log in. 
so yeah, I yeah, I, I kind of like soft uninstall Twitter for a long time. I used to do uh, reviews when we were done with the games at the end of the playthroughs. But it just I just haven't liked where the platform has been going. But I'm also at the point where I'm not really sure what the alternative would be. So for me, it'll be TBD if I want to have one. I've been pretty happy just talking about in stream itself, giving final thoughts and things like that, which I started to do more often. I think, like, sometimes I used to do them, and if you look back at, like, our earliest reviews, I don't think I have those. There was something that I just kind of started doing towards, I think, like, a year and a half in. And honestly, with, like, again, the kind of changes to the platform, I do like writing little quick things, because I tend to be very long-winded. <laughs> Chad has seen me to give some of those reviews. So, I, you know, I think there was value in writing it out to some extent, but I'm not sure there's a platform for that yet. Because I do think I, I do think people would be interested, because I play a whole bunch of different games other than PSO and things of that nature, how I feel about those kinds of things, especially if they're on the fence. Oh, chat is curious. I did not see the option to edit my review because somebody has commented, or not commented, Somebody basically gave a rating on it in Twitch, or not Twitch, in Steam. I could talk today. So unfortunately, no edits to talk about the other crashes that happened the other day. Kind of a tangent there, but you know how it goes sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to me. I, I don't know. I just wanted like just a simple platform to kind of communicate on, and I haven't really found one yet. Maybe I'll poke around. I know there's a lot of, you know, Twitter alternatives ever since the management change, but honestly, I just haven't been feeling it in general. And maybe things will change. Well, speaking of which, we're about to see one of the text changes. Let's see what happens. All right, there we go. That has always bothered me, chat. Listen. ESO for a long time has been calling experience EXP. I'm calling it XP. <laughs> that was just one of those things I'm like, listen, I don't want to see the Ian experience when I kill things anymore over that. I'm like, listen, just because they want to do it special, I don't refer to it like that ever in any scenario. I might as well change it to something that makes sense. So good to see that that change has worked, so that means the other changes have probably worked. The other ones are more joke slash meme -y. So, you know, mileage may vary there, but honestly, that was one thing that really annoyed me. <laughs> Just like... Weird abbreviations for things. Ah, uh, there we go. The item tracker is starting to, to pick up some items. We start to have the other add-on component live. So I just kind of wanted to showcase a room with a lot of kind of condensed waves where a lot of them are more or less on top of each other. What that might look like to gameplay. So you can see, like, even as I walk closer, the white text above the items doesn't appear right away. But you are allowed to color code each of the item boxes. It's actually very specific how much you could drill down. I was very surprised. So you can make every single healing item a different color compared to the scape dolls, compared to the utility items. So I can make it match my mini-map over time. So I've been finding it very useful for uh, identifying a lot of similar materials, because sometimes I don't pick up all materials on characters. Or I like the fact that without looking at my item list, I could tell exactly where certain items are. So for example, if there's like a level 30 technique that drops, like a shifta, I'm not just digging around like all the items in the room if I don't remember the exact spot it spawned in, because I might not catch it right away in the item reader. Like, see how there's a moon atomizer there? I don't have to look at the, the item list and then kind of do my detective work sometimes. So I think from that standpoint, it's going to end up being not as useful in casual play, as much as it's going to be useful in something like challenge mode, where I want to be able to very quickly identify all the healing items, their variety, while I'm in fight, mid-fight. Because I might be really, really desperate to get 
fluids or even things like antidotes and anti-paralysis to make sure that our team levels up mags as we play. So I think this will make that whole journey a lot easier when we get started with it over the weekend. Yeah, and for people that don't like memorize my color code when I play with the item color and the minimaps, I think giving them like a literal literal representation where if I stand here, I could see the, the die grinder and I could see the moon atomizer. And I could see it through enemies. And you can see moon atomizer I left white. Die grinder I left orange. I think there's only like one or two that I customized so far. So definitely want to see where this goes in the future in terms of potential. But I like that even if my back is turned, it tells me generally what direction I need to turn to get to it. But it's overall a really useful reader. Again, I was really worried it would just be like, every healing item is green, you can't turn it off, but we'll, we'll open the menu after the quest to kind of show some stuff when we're not in the middle of like actual combat. Because I think the boss boxes help give an idea, because you can even customize one how big the text is, when does the text appear? When does the box appear? So I think whoever worked on it, I honestly forget the developer, my apologies, uh, really actually thought about the use case within this. I will point out though, star atomizer broken, that doesn't work. But aside from that, it's been very useful for saying like, I as a level 180 character generally do not care about things like monomates and monofluids and antidotes and any paralysis. I only care about like soul atomizers, tries, maybe dies depending on the character. So I like that I can fine tune the item. I like that it can also pick up clear steel five items, which will never show up, well, pretty much never show up on minimap. And also can kind of get lost in the item reader because item reader most of the time, you only really care about things like does it have hit percentage? Right, like if it's a common weapon or an armor, if it's not four slot, it's not popping up. So rather than clutter my item reader with items that are like 90% of the time won't do anything, I really like that I could defer to the Dropbox reader to cover the gap. And again, because it's immediately visual on screen, I can see the trimate exactly where it is even if a player happens to be standing on it, which is another thing that does happen with the minimap from time to time. Where if there's enough players in one spot, I'll see an item drop and not see it. Sort of like how I can mostly cover the healing item by just stepping over it here. Which, in the moment, can lead to, like, panic, where I'm like, oh no, I need the healing, where is it? But nope. Those worries are gone. Also, I just realized I did not bring the right merge here, being a bad player right now. I was like, wait a minute, I took that off last time I played. I do need the Rabarda merge for the boss, but I should probably have it for... I should probably use the Kapoe merge here. Chip him out with fireballs, because why not? Well, on the plus side, my Rabarda does a lot of damage here. On the downside, I'm about to get run over by Dwarfon. Actually, you know what? I cast it just in time. We'll take that. Yeah, sadly here I just don't have enough roll stats to even do anything ATA related. Unless I were to sub something out. I mean, even with triple adept, I'm only at 150 ATA, which is pretty bad. Like, hmm mostly have a caster mag on to deal with those kinds of things. Anyway, I should probably stop being bad player. Let me go apologize to Imperimeter here for being suboptimal. Give me a second. It's not like I don't have it. It just takes me like one minute to go collect. I guess I could also bring Rapoi merge. There's some scenarios in which I would use it. Anyway. Yeah, case in point, I know exactly where the grinder is. I'll pick it up, we'll move on. Welcome, Amadeus. Hope you're doing well. How am I doing? Eh. Still feel a little congested, honestly, but I feel a lot better compared to last week. Hope you're doing well. Hopefully you've been 
if you've been playing PSO, you've been enjoying the new add-on, because it is quite good, actually. <laughs> Maybe we'll pull out to chat what my random text should be in-game. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> okay, I can see the enemies do it. <laughs> oh, no. That was so dumb. Anyway, for chat who might not have seen it just then, uh, when the enemies miss, it just said skill diff. So dumb. You know what, chat? That brings me amusement in the day. We'll, we'll probably ask chat what they'd like to see whenever they see the miss pop up. What does it do? Well, you can see on the ground currently, there's actually white text above the item boxes. It's customizable the size, the position, how far away you can see it. Chrono Cross? Oh no. Damn. Chrono Cross is a good one. Yeah, but uh, so the the add-on specifically just helps you identify items quickly, and it's very customizable, which I was very surprised at. For something that just came out, where they're like, oh, this is, you know, my first version, blah, 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 and I look at it, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is way more feature complete than I was expecting. I was like, oh. Wait, now Stardomizer's popping up on the... What? I swear Stardomizer did not pop up earlier. I just made a comment as we walked by it earlier, but this time it did. Interesting. Unless I was somehow holding... No, I couldn't have been holding at the time. I don't know. Well, anyway, I like that it also hides items, for example. So, if I have 10 trimates, I don't really need more trimates. So, it also... You could choose for it to not inform you when there's items like that on the floor. Now, some players might find it useful because they're collecting items for their forced friend or whatever, and they're going cross-character. But generally speaking, from the expectations of the items, like, I could see exactly where the four slot frame is if I wanted it. And as I said before, I, I'm not sure how much use I'll get out of it in casual play. Like, it does help me speed up a little bit in finding, like, discs in particular, because those are things I'll go out of my way for. Grinders I usually don't worry about too much. Oh, I still got run over with Gafoe. That's unfortunate. But I like the idea that I can see the items without needing to item check. There's just kind of an alternative... Oh boy, I'm taking damage. It's an alternative to the existing item reader. Because sometimes the item reader does have its faults. Like, if we kill, like, 300 enemies in a room, which we'll do later today just to showcase some, like, different test scenarios. Um, when we get into scenarios like that, it could be easy to lose track of items. So I just want to show, like, for example, if you look at where my character's head is... You, I can tell from the color it's escape doll, that's the default color, but if I walk slightly forward, I could see it's escape doll. I was definitely worried that I would just see like this wall of like white text everywhere, the font would be huge. But for me, it's like pretty minimal, but it, it tells me enough that I can make a decision at the same time. So I've been enjoying it. Hopefully you've been doing well, Amadeus. I don't remember if I asked, but I should have asked if I did not. Yeah, here's where I might switch back to Rufoe. Gonna swap in between. Guess it doesn't hurt to just Gafoe stack for the next wave. Just to slow them down, if nothing else. And yeah, we gotta get that frame perfect cast. Give me a second. I'm gonna start stacking. Gotta get that frame perfect stack going again. So here's a great example. I as a force will turn off the item reader when I have this menu open. So if an item drops from one of those enemies in the meantime, I will not know where the item is, but with the floor reader for the drop box, I'll always know where it is. Doing okay, I haven't played PS in a while, was leveling raw moral for a bit. Okay, well if you wanna level today with us, we're happy to do it. It is Rare Enemy Week, so I'm actually going to do something different for Rare Enemy Week. And that's going to be playing Yellow ID more often, which is what we're doing currently. So right now we're taking advantage of potentially even beat. Honestly, we'll probably even do it even if it's not on even beat. I think Yellow ID is strong enough that 
with two forces, it doesn't really matter who you bring. Like, our best drops will be everywhere in the, in the boss rush, so there's always use for ATP or MST at that point with two forces. Oh my gosh, are we at the end of the soundtrack? Have we done it, chat? <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. There we go. There's the Razan 29 in case I want to pick it up. Stuff like that, for example. Like, I, I would not be able to find that box if I was not paying attention. Like, maybe I could deduce from the number that sometimes it's early. Yeah. Why deduce when you could just see it? And like by the time I warp away, it's not going to be visible anymore. Oh, I did it too early. Player bad. I'm going to go for the stun lock. I'll let him parameter set a fireball if he wants. There we go, this should kill them. I actually killed him, Parameter. Oh, there we go. I still got the stack going on them, if nothing else. Defense up in Parameter a little. I mean, they did die to the stack of Foley, so it, it did have a purpose. I'm gonna say no to this. And this is where Imperameter actually shines. Zond is actually way stronger than my Rezond. So I'll let him stack a little here. Also, Chad, I would just like to say I am so sad how much worse forces are in multiplayer episode one. I, I got to remind myself of how strong they are in single player play. Which might influence the quest list that I'm building. Holy chat, I was doing random attack again, off stream. Free. That was a free quest. I was like, wow, no effort, millions of XP, let's go. Four enemies. Unfortunately, we're about to be double zooed Gertabulu, which is kind of annoying with only MST, because you want to grant the Gertabulu, but eventually the Rappies will make up and cause a problem. So I found in order to negate that, I actually stand over here during this to stop from hitting him with grants. That's been my solution, although I stood a little too close. It was like off by one step. Apparently by two steps. That's fair. Yeah, there we go. We gotta make him at least do the animations, not just do the rapid attacks. There we go. And Parameter took care of the birds. Now we just together grants this thing in into oblivion. So yep, I could just pick up all the diamates that I want. So now no diamates will appear. I'll try to point them out if they end up in the item reader. But I basically told it to turn it off if I'm capped. Well, there's so there's a great example. So the die fluid is not pick upable. Now I use the die fluid. The die fluid is visible. So I could kind of customize it to appear or disappear depending on scenarios that we happen to be running. And most of the time I happen to be doing higher level play. So for me, I don't really find knowing every single die mate or die fluid location necessary, unless I actually need it. Maybe chat will have similar feelings to what they want. Nice level up from Parameter. I'm gonna stop their dive bomb. Let Imperameter deal with this. Do a couple Rivardas to speed it up though, don't get me wrong. Then I'm gonna go right back to Fireball. There we go. 
Got a little bit of head damage on the Pyrogoron. Though I gotta be careful after this wave. This is the one that actually needs the Gafoe stack. Here's another example. I'm gonna recognize I do 293 and Parameter does 410. That's all I gotta do is stack Gafoe while he deals with this. That way we cover each other. So he could just single target the zoo down, I'll let him deal with that, because he'll have the simple text for it. And I'll take advantage of Magical Peace Kapoe Merge to basically nuke everything. Because, spoilers, uh, phone and broken. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. Even in multiplayer with their enhanced health, he still can combo kill them by himself. Just spawn and instantly die. There's a tri fluid I can pick up later. Yeah, I could do item management without needing to, as I said before, micromanage the list. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not, as I said before. Sometimes there's only a couple items in a room, so it's like, okay, if it's, you know, you fought five enemies and that was the only wave you did, of course the item is going to be there, kind of things. There's other scenarios where, you know, I can see there's two scape dolls in the room according to the boxes without needing to check my list. And sometimes that list can get kind of crazy. Right now it's like sort of tame, you know, I'm getting like maybe five or six registered items on it at the moment. But then we'll do something like a Halloween event, or we'll do something like a uh, massive attack B, where all the zoos are kind of stacked on each other. Oh, I don't get to, I don't get to do my favorite trap here. Normally I just trap right here and move on. What a shame. Yeah, even if it leaves even beat, I don't really care. I've been enjoying Yellow Force here. Yeah, I'm gonna recognize that I'm the stun locker here, so then we can leave it to Imperimeter what he would like to do. If he ordains that he wants the Gafoe or whatever, I'll just let him do it. We'll cover each other. Yeah, like, we know a Marissa wave is coming up, so they're basically just instantly dead. There's really not much they could do about it after this wave. But we gotta take care of the detonators first. Again, same scenario. I'm gonna go for a stun lock here. Oh, I got meleeed. Must have been slightly too close. How rude. Right. Let's focus on the stun lock, and parameter will stack. get like one good foe out. We'll just kind of assist the damage there. Oh, it's not the thing I wanted to grants. Yeah, like I could see a Celestial Armors on the floor for slot. Like those are examples of things where like I would not know where those are. Even with the item reader, I would not know specifically if I did not look at the item reader at the time where it is. Because again, there's a lot of waves in this game that they spawn in the same places as other enemies. You're like, okay, it was like 12 items ago, but like, what was the last time I noticed that item drop? Was it this side of the room or the other side? Never know. Could save a little bit of time. I still see it being pretty much like a game changer for challenge mode. So I am really happy I picked it up at, at minimum for challenge mode. Other than that, I'll leave it more subdued for the most part. I don't need big boxes. I don't need big text. If I miss an item, it's whatever. So I, sl I very slightly reduced the draw distance from what I remember. But it wasn't, like, a big change. Honestly, I was kind of surprised that most of the default settings were actually fine, in terms of, like, colors and stuff like that. The only thing I would disagree with is that there were just basically way too many items turned on. Nice level up. I'm still not at max MST, so I have a little bit of room for growth here. Yeah, like, according to the minimap, I know exactly where the tri-fluid is. Thank you, Calpecia. Oh, weird. I don't hear it outputting the audio to my other headset audio. I'll have to check that later. Blame Windows for that. It messed with my sound settings again. So apologies if I miss any sound alerts today. So, the reason why I've been enjoying Yellow ID is that regardless if it's rare enemy or not, 
I'm gonna get a Galatine from the boss. And if it is Conjuryu, then I get Daylight Scar. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> right, Chan? I'm like, oh, okay. The surface, uh, Dorfon, Eclair can give us Cannon Rouge. So this is still technically a Cannon Rouge run. It's just unlikely. Because there's not that... Oh, game, please. There's not that many uh, Dorfons to hunt in the quest itself. I don't want to hit the yellow one. There's a red one. Good. Uh, have to rest of this and then move slightly. Gotta be kidding me. No, it's so close. I didn't even know that slow mode you. I didn't even know. Is that the first time that's happened? I swear, chat. I I did. I don't think that's the first time I've ever been slow mode by that. I thought it just did damage to you. The more you know, I guess. It must be like a low percent chance, like twenty or something. Anyway. Uh, no ice staff, sadly. I need to purchase one of those, but we could put on a Rebarda merge. It'll be all good. It at least sounds like we're in the credit music, so we might have finally exhausted the seventh dragon, maybe. We get to fight the boss in silence. I have no idea how I dodged that, but we're gonna take that. That's fine. Oh? We did it, Chad. Right at the end, we ran out of music. Oh, I didn't quite cast it fast enough. Too early. Oh no, I did perfectly. There we go. Imperimeter did. One of the above. I'll give Imperimeter the credit. That saves a lot of time. Oh, I, oh, that time I think I got it. Yeah, there we go. So stupid. I love it. Oh, and Parameter got me on that one. Sometimes I could see who does it. Sometimes I don't. That's more player bad <laughs> recognizing. But anyway, we'll be switching soundtracks once we're done with the boss. Enjoy your eerily silent dragon fight. Or whatever. I could... Do they consider this a dragon? Maybe it's just a worm. I don't know. Listen, we've, we've been playing so much Berseria, they call things dragons that aren't dragons. I have no idea what these are anymore. <laughs> it's like, we've seen it before. If, if they look vaguely reptilian, they'll go, yeah, it's a dragon, and I'll be like, okay. <laughs> we'll just nod our heads to it. There we go. Switched to a different soundtrack. The Half Minute Hero. Oh, sadly no Galatines. Hmm. Well, I can tell we got a whole lot of nothing, unfortunately. Not a great room to do the item practice on. Unfortunate. Say if you want to hop in, Amadeus, you're more than welcome. Or if there's other people waiting in the wings, let us know. We have free slots. I promise you the carry is ultra free. Might as well as restock since I'm here. Yeah, this character has gradually been powering up off stream. Doesn't have a lot of hours put in him yet, but good enough. Oh, that's right. You automatically get it in this quest. Oh, I see Hell Cleave waiting in the wings. Oh, <laughs> actually. I also have to remember when we go to play the other forces uh, to check what difficulty I'm playing on because 
I was practicing with Anguish a little bit to see if some of it was worth it. And I'm gonna be honest with you, Anguish won caves kind of easy for Force. It was to the point I did all the way up to Anguish 3 and I was like, oh, I actually get more XP here. So if all I'm looking for is XP and not item drops, I actually had a lot of fun just playing, uh, weirdly enough, Anguish 3 with the Force in single player. I don't know if I would do that in multiplayer. But I was like, wow, everything is weak to uh, lightning in single player. This is easy. <laughs> Just stack all my three seals and other nonsense there. We got Hellcleave with us today. Give Chad a minute or so if they want to hop in. We're in block two as always. Here before I forget. Oh no. Hellcleave wants to give me something. Oh, a Berserk Arm. Unfortunately, I have to put that down for now. That is a massive pickup for me. Thank you, Hellcleave. That is going to open the door for me to do a lot of solo runs for Endless. I basically needed a really strong Berserk option so that I don't lose a ton of time in single player play. I mean, it's always nice to not have to use money in runs, don't get me wrong, but, like, it's actually required. <laughs> if I, if it's the don't use Vesetta, but it's like, do you really want a power attack in Ruins? An only power attack? I don't know. A bit, a bit suspect, as it were. So we'll do the same quest thing again. Once this ends... I guess we'll pick a different quest... I did notice that Penumbral Surge was there, but I'm not going to force chat to play Temple unless they want to. I will say, I was ha I did do some uh, Penumbral Surge off stream. I did miss that quest. Oh, I should not have good Player bad. Uh... Player bad. And I got max punish with the rare enemy too. Damn. Unfortunate. Oh well, rip that XP. So, the other thing that's kind of nice about rare enemy... I mean, rare Rappy doesn't matter. It has no items of interest. But from the Pazuzu standpoint, I believe Yellow ID is Heavenly Power... Girasol, I think? It's definitely Girasol for the rare enemy. So it's nice that Rare Enemy Week actually does benefit Yellow ID pretty heavily. So Surface, basically all but the Rappy, is really good in terms of drops. So I've learned that, you know what? The worst that happens is I'm just doing a ma I'm doing an Episode 4 quest, which already has a ton of value. And even if I don't see Rare Enemies, I still get the boss attempts. Like, I want Galatine from the normal boss drop. So I was like, why not? I don't super care if I get Marissa or not, for example. And I like the fact that uh, it at least the Gurdabulu has an item of like moderate value because it can drop the Swordsman lore. So it's definitely a lot better than most of the other choices. Like it's it's not going to be as crazy as like the Limiter, don't get me wrong, but it's still pretty good. Nocturnal says I love this new add-on. Welcome Nocturnal. Question Nocturnal, did you want to hop in? We have a free slot. We're still at the beginning of the quest. Let us know. Yellow ID does not care about resetting, <laughs> to be real with you. Oh, there we go. They got skill diffed. I saw it. I think Hellcleave missed. Rip Hellcleave. Oh, there we go. There it goes again. Hel Hellcleave will show it off. Oh, that means if Hellcleave uses charge. I wonder if... Oh. Wait, no, no. I don't think I could see that as other players. Yeah, it'll say something special if you use money. No worries, Nocturnal. But glad the new add-on has been uh, working for you as well. Yeah, I was very pleasantly surprised at its options. Next time we go to the boss, I'll open up the menu. E even if there's no boxes, I will open it this time. There we go. I keep seeing skill diffs. There we go. We're going to take advantage of Hellcleave's damage. Oop, I've been runneth over. There we go. Hellcleave's going in.
Do, 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 do. Uh, let's still use the tripod. I'll leave it on that menu. Just see the skill diff every now and then. Or help leave. Slow them down significantly. Poor enemies. Hopefully, we see some rare enemies on the surface. More specifically, Dwarf on a Clear. I think that'll be my goal. Every time we play on rare enemy weeks, it's not going to be seeing Kondryu. I don't care about Kondryu anymore. He had his chance. I want to see Dorf on a clear. <laughs> Can actually get value from him. It'd be funny getting an actual good Cannon Rouge from that. So yeah, I don't think this idea is like the most value packed, but it does get a lot of value for Rare Enemy. I'm not going to lie. Although, weirdly, if we do end up getting Kondryu, I think it's less value to have that than a Galatine. Guess it really just depends on the price of the market. I mean, both of them are worse than Heaven Striker and Excal. Guess it just depends on the market. Both on drop. Goodbye. Uh, I'll take these. Oh, I don't have room for die grinders. Well, that solves that, I guess. We're gonna pick up our mono grinder, and I'm gonna get my big red box around the photon drop. That HP material I almost passed over. Yeah, there's some defaults that were on it that I just don't agree with at all. Like, I, I don't get why, like, support techniques were level 29, for example. Like, just put them to 30. Because it gives you an option to see 15, 20, and also choose the lowest level if it doesn't fit into that. So again, it's it's a lot more flexible than I was thinking it was, but yeah, it really should have just been like 30 by default. Is what it is, I guess. Potentially for challenge mode, I might have to like ease the restriction quite a lot. We'll see. Because I know you don't get many spells in challenge mode, to the point I don't even think you start with Resta until Ruins, for example, and you have to find it. So finding low-level spells would actually be super important. I'll believe there's a little bit of pew-pew laser time left. Goodbye, enemies. And this character has just been very steadily powering up. Originally, they were below 1400 MST. Now they are quite good. Run, hell cleave, run. Aw. Oh. Rip hell cleave. That was a very timely heal. There we go. Chip him out real quick. Bye. Their photon drop. I'll take that.
yeah, I think overall, not a bad run. Wish the Gorons had like a little more value underground, but everything else is pretty good. I get a decent amount of PD, what type of needle should I buy? Um I mean there's usually only one type of needle that you get if you're referring to challenge mode weapons. But even then I wouldn't I don't know if I would jump straight to needle for that though. Honestly I've been prefer preferring shot a bit more, but maybe needle makes sense in other quests. The, the quest that I want to use it on, I only want to use shot. Yeah, hell is pretty much the only choice there. It's one of those things where I would recommend if you play the quests or you know what quests you want to do with the gun, find out if it would be more useful in that specific quest to have a shotgun or a spread needle. A spread needle does allow for a lot of really quick ones if they happen to be close but i know there's a lot of quests like ccc for example where i don't want to run needle at all or there's a lot of times where they spawn on opposite ends of the room which can be a little awkward since uh needle's not exactly not really gonna get you there So, interestingly, it's highlighting Foe 28 for me. Did one of the settings reset? Let's open it up now. X. Oh, that's right. I put it back down to 28 for testing. Well, at least you get to see you can color code all of these. Yeah, I don't like some of the colors here. I haven't decided what to change them to yet. Show name override. No. Everything else is here. I'll close this for now. I forgot that I did actually adjust it down because I was remembering I wanted to see, for example, uh, 27 grants. So I'm like, 27 grants is like maybe the, the earliest I would take it. Otherwise, I'm like, uh, maybe I'd like 28 more. So it looks like I left it at 28. Versus like 29 or something like that. By this room of enemies. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, we'll be continuing with the guide on Saturday. I'm not actually sure if I can start challenge mode on Saturday, sadly. I was reminded that there was something I have to go to at 1 o'clock. We'll see, I guess. If there's enough people here, I'll at least try, like, a stage on Saturday. But, like, I guess it's, like, an hour and a half is at least, it does sound like enough time to at least try a stage and see how we feel. But we have to start, like, exactly at 11 or so. So we'll, we'll, we'll double check. I don't think there's too much I want to update in the item guide. I might take people's opinions before we go into the section IDs more details I have a format in mind but I'm still kind of recovering from sickness so I don't really want to do like a super long video like that sadly I know it's like really easy to come up with excuses not to do it but I'm like I genuinely still don't feel well that's so like only if I have some prior obligations will I go do anything other than that at this point so I'll consider it for Sunday though hopefully I'll feel better rested Since I do want to make sure for people that are looking to do it, I did fix a lot of the quest recommendations off stream. So like, whenever I do delay it, I'm at least going back and trying to add value back into the guide itself. To go like, oh, I didn't think of this when I was doing this, or oh, I really like this quest and I was reminded that this quest exists. Things of that nature. Oh, he's going in.
Hello, Stunlock City. But in the meantime, I have been compiling based off of our streams the quests that I do enjoy running. And I actually got a pretty sizable way through that. So weirdly, I almost completed another guide while I was not feeling all that well. So at least I could say that work is being done towards the gods. Because I was really struggling to think of any quests to add that weren't seasonal quests. So I think at this point I just have seasonal quests and maybe some touch-ups. So hopefully for players that haven't seen the other streams, because again, there, there's years worth of streams. Uh, hopefully they could just look at that guide and understand like what quests that I like to do. Or like what items are really good to hunt there. So I think there are some gems in there that people don't usually play. Like for example, they're not necessarily an RBR, but people just don't play them. And they are good at very specific hunts. You know, some of them are more known. I would say, like, some of the retrieval quests, for example, in Episode 1 aren't exactly, like, the rarest quests ever. But it's good to remind people that they exist. <laughs> and always remind people to never go to the third floor of Ruins in the Spirit Orb quest. <laughs> yeah, I, I put a big disclaimer there. I'm like, you do not want to finish this quest. Don't you dare. Don't you dare go there. <laughs> I mean, like... You know, it's called Fragments of a Memory, but you're gonna feel fragmented yourself as your mind splits and shatters trying to comprehend the stupidity that is that quest. <laughs> like, just, just say no to that, Chad. It's fine. And I'll always have a reminder, so Chad can yell at me if I forget what quest it's in. Like, you're never taking us there again. We'll never forgive you. We remember. The spirit orb taketh, and only taketh away. Actually, I was doing it right. There we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Mine offensive. Mine offensive was definitely special. I should put... I should put an explicit ex disclaimer to specifically avoid that quest. Not not to recommend it in even the slightest. This could probably should chip him out. Good enough. So yeah, we'll we'll put some disclaimers at like truly horrendously unplayable quests. Although, to be fair, I don't want to name, like, every quest, because there are a lot of, like, I don't know, like, Rappy on the Beach or something, where it's like, no no normal person will go hunt this. There, There is a reason you have selected this quest, and it has nothing to do with value. I'm like, listen. There we go. By Yowies. <laughs> the ones that make you vomit, yeah. I, I don't even want to give more descriptions other than, like, well, <laughs> almost call it, like, on the naughty list. <laughs> like, it's, like, basically banned. I'm never playing it on stream. I just don't want to. Like, like, I don't want to put shop quests there, because technically it's like, oh, it's like, oh, but there's no good hunts there. But it's like, no, no, no. We got to reserve special slots for special quests. They know what they did. But yeah, I think that quest list was pretty exhaustive. I think I got up to episode four in terms of descriptions. I think I did finish all the episode two ones, which is kind of nice. On. I want to see at least one rare enemy. Wow, brutal. It's fine. Galatine chances. I do need, like, five Galatines. So to be fair, like, this is still an item that I actually genuinely need, because I have one Galatine for all of my rangers and my humor. Although, but let's be real, humor is not gonna get. Maybe one day. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I eventually have to figure out what to re-ID the humor as. Like, obviously, it has to be something that can solo TTF. But, like, which of those IDs should it be? Because right now he's, uh... 
I think he's yellow, which I would not want to run anything other than boss rush with him if I'm going to do it. I guess I'm tempted to make him red. It, it, it kind of is my favorite one to do, but he doesn't have traps to do the things that makes red overpowered. I've been kind of like back and forth what would make sense for him. Like, Viridian's a very boring answer, but it's still technically valid, I guess. I think I have enough Viridian characters is the problem. Almost got the rust out, I was so close. Oh, did it? Oh, Parameter is invincibility. Parameter should just deal with it. I'll be fine. There we go. We'll let Parameter do some damage. I'll do my best to dodge it. I almost got it there. So close. I walked into that. That was my fault. That, that was my skill issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nothing compelled me to walk forward there. Oh, I, I pressed it too slow. Damn, wanted to break the cutscene. Rip. I guess I kind of funny find it funny we're playing or listening to Half Minute Hero, but the soundtracks are more than a half minute long. <laughs> Something about that I find amusing. And that Rafoli was so nice. Ooh, Mono Grinder. Wow, sub 20 minutes. I'll take that. Yeah, every quest is more or less a level up at this level, so the more I do, the better he gets at it. There's sadly no super important rare enemies of note, but welcome to rare enemy week, I guess. Oh yeah, that's right, I can finally put away HP material. I did it. This character ended up consuming quite a few. Sell this armor, restock fluids. Yeah, it's like I mostly go money neutral on the quest. Multiplayer, I'll end up with a profit. all that matters at the end of the day. As, well, as long as I'm just not, like, constantly draining my wallet, I think we're good. I guess the question is, is there any other rare enemy I want to take advantage of? Hmm. Give me a second to think about it. Oh, Dango's here. He's unchained. Welcome, Dango. I'm taking a look at that, but if Chad has any recommendations for quests... I might as well pop up RBR while I look at stuff so the chat has a thing to look at. Do I really want to do episode one? I'm just thinking about it. Hmm. Just thinking. I'm gonna open my quest guide to feel inspired. I guess if anybody's looking for... any particular weapon, let me know. I think that'll determine the run. I did get value out of the S Parts V101 run in random. We could technically do purple ID on, uh, what's it called? Random attack stage. It's technically, that's Vice and also Lily, which is kind of funny. There are a lot of Vice chances if we get the uh, other route. Scrolling through. 
Hmm. I guess I could do one more of these quests. Maybe. On episode four. I'm just thinking. But anyway, if chat has any suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just in processing mode. I'm looking through my quest options. I don't feel like playing those right now. We could... Well, Point of Disaster is better when it's even beat. I was going to say, we haven't done those in a while, because I would like to get more 13s out of that quest. Maybe we'll just do random attack. Ooh, Viridian or Orange? Actually, you know what? I'm going to do Purple ID. <laughs> you know what? We'll, we'll spin the win on Lily. <laughs> Might as well as. I mean, the worst thing that happens is you still get value. I'd prefer it not to take us to falls, but we'll see where it takes us, I guess. So we'll do one purple, and then I'll switch it off to probably orange or something like that. Yellow ID is not bad in random attack. It just it's not my preferred hunt still. So yeah, let's let's just get some general XP in. Not like a super hard quest. Yeah, I got my yeah, I had my setup from before. All, I think yeah, even at the cure paralysis. I was doing this quest solo. It's very dumb. So basically how this works is that if we get mines, we get a lot of vice chances. If we go to ruins, we get spread needle. If we get to instead of the mines boss, we get to the optional area, that's like the payday for purple ID. So we'll, we'll see if we end up there or not. It's all down to the dice, I suppose. Yeah, funny enough, orange ID is also a really good option to select. So we'll, we'll do the actual probably more meta orange ID after this. But I figured we could just say we did Lily's once. <laughs> just like, why not? Who cares? What else are we going to do a Lily run while going for other items? What I like about Orange ID, though, is that if we do get mines, oh my gosh, the value is, like, off the charts. Although, funny enough, too, is that if we do end up going towards ruins, there are a ton of Chaos Bringers, and Orange is one of the IDs that ends up getting value from that. So I found that kind of funny, looking at it. Because normally I don't think Orange and Ruins, for the most part, but I'm like... Yeah, I mean, if there's like a million Chaos Bringers, that's the, where the profits of Votav is. We can still say we Uber Hunt or something. I mean, the worst comes the worst if we have to reset here. It doesn't really matter. Like, oh no, I got more lilies. Ideally, we'll get to the path going to the mines, just because I think there's more lilies there than the other path. And then obviously it'll lead to like a bazillion vices. And also... There's, I believe, a total of nine Kanoines, which are the leader units of the floating robots. So we actually get nine Yashmitikov chances there. It's actually pretty high for mines. I was like, oh, I wouldn't mind getting a Yashmitikov, to be honest with you, chat. That's all you have to tell me to get me interested in a quest. I'm like, listen, more Yashmitikov. And I'm like, okay, I understand. Also, I should probably get a couple of fluids. If I had seven tries and two dies, I would not go back, but I was like, wait a minute. So again, the, the runs don't have to be the most optimal things ever, but it is actually surprising with the loadouts that are here, how much better this quest is than I give it credit for. Like, every time I think that, you know, oh, I don't think I should use XID here, I look at the enemy counts and I'm like, oh, kind of shocking. Like, I, di I didn't realize until I was looking at the enemy counts, for example, the other day, that the Endless Episode 1 is actually, like, one of the best Del Saber quests in the game. It's not listed on the kill count for it, for some reason, but oh my, are there, like, so many Del Sabers. There's 56. That's a, that's a lot of chances at Swordsman lore. So if you're wondering how Chris ended up with his Swordsman lore, I just did one Endless and he had it. I was like, oh... Wow, I act there's actually a pink ID episode one quest that exists. 
the fabled legend of people complaining online that there's nothing you can hunt with pink ID. I'm like, wait a minute, I actually get value? <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, every enemy is good for pink ID? What happened? So yeah, maybe we'll do the, we'll do the infamous uh, endless episode one pink ID. Since I don't know if I've done that on stream. I did, I did it a lot off stream. Although funny enough, it only took one run in order for us to get a uh, Swordsman lore. Since think of it this way, you're guaranteed to get every single area in ruins from what I could understand. So you're always going to end up with 56 chances. And, you know, you still get benefits from like Cave Boss, like you have Holy Ray. So you don't even have like completely awful boss drops. Because most people, unless you're going the Falls route, only really have the Worm Boss for drops. With the exception of Blue ID, of course. Uh, give us mines, please. If not, I'll still finish out the quest. I've learned to just embrace it and not reset. That's fine. We'll keep going. I would prefer mines. This is also fine. I just call this my spread needle chances. You know what's really mean, though? If we go the other route, they put three lilies you can't reach on the other side of the room, so there's a possibility the Psycho 1 could spawn out of reach the only other path. That would be one of the truly most evil things you've ever seen. <laughs> and yeah, see how I'm just using Rafoe here to shut down the wave? Man, is this easy in single player chat. I cannot emphasize to you how free this quest is for single player. I did this as faux neural, and I was like, wow, wait a minute. If you take me to... So it was like, I finally have a quest where Phone Roll is like one of the best at it. Because think about it this way. I have the ability to go to Falls without having to do Vault Op. I'm like, wait a minute. She's freed. <laughs> she finally she finally is a real quest. In single player, I was like, oh my gosh. She gets to actually bully in this quest. Finally. Yeah, we'll, we'll embrace the no reset mentality here. I've learned to just just give in and enjoy. <laughs> just, don't don't care about the RNG. Just go. We'll probably get spread needle or some nonsense. And that'll be good enough. Yeah, you'll notice a very high number of sorcerers. There's like Sorcerers tend to actually have pretty good rares for most IDs across the board. Viridian ID here is crazy. Yeah, Viridian I think is the more balanced one focused towards falls. I feel like orange ID is like so, so overwhelmingly good in the mines route. So if you brace the reset mentality, Wow, is it busted. Like, think of it this way, chat. Even if you take the Mines route with Orange ID, there's a chance instead of fighting uh, Volt Op that you'll be forced to fight Chaos Bringers. And you're like, wait a minute. That's like Orange ID's only value hunt in Ruins. You're like, wait. Are you telling me I get to go through an entire level of V101 and S parts, and then at the end I get Prophets of Otab? Like, wait, <laughs> where's, the, where's the downside? So yeah, orange ID mines is like out of control. Good there. I feel like endless episode two is a little harder for me to call, which it's good for, because I don't think you get to visit every single variation of it. And there's not really high enemy counts either. So it's kind of harder to say. Where this one, it's very definitive. It's very chaos bringer focused. It's very Sinnoh red focused. It has a good amount of guild chicks, so it'll just give extra value to orange ID and stuff like that. There are Dark Gunners for people that care about it, because some characters only get Guardiana from the Dark Gunners, for example. So it's important that it has quite a few enemy types here, and ones that are usually a bit harder to get without being like a total pain. It's a rare, rare combo. Yeah, just view this as like a nice XP quest. Like, is it going to be higher than TTF? No. 
Do we actually get a ton of item chances? Absolutely. And freeze him once? That sucks. Unfortunate. Ouch. I've been the body. I deserve that. Yeah, single player it's much easier. I was playing Phonural with only one Barda buff, and she kills them in six casts, I think. But if you wield like the Ice Mace, you could kill them in five. Which means that they never get to trigger their ability, they just die before that happens, which is hilarious. Also, I should have sit in a different part of the room. That's okay. Oh man, somebody's like lined up with me still. This is brutal. I'm just getting hit over and over. Uh... Also tried Phone World earlier. She's really good at this quest, honestly. She's like a little weaker in mines, but oh man, single player here? Oh. You're like, wait a minute, I can actually bring like a TTF ID with phone neural here and I don't have to worry about ATP or getting bodied in mines. Like, okay. Take that bet all day long. Yeah, because for the most part, like when there's these three chaos bringers at the end of the, well, kind of the middle of the room in the falls room, you just kind of barter them and they die so fast. Like, I'm going to choose not to be in the middle because I know that's where they are. I'll go more to the side here. So, like, for me, I'm basically just escaping and looking to survive another day. Yeah, like, I froze him, so I got some time here. I'm basically just stalling them, which is fine. We don't we don't have to do anything super important. <laughs> just, I pulled the Darkbringer away from the group, so they could just kind of pick at them as they need to. See that? Look, now I'm bringing them in range. Like, I'm parading him around, basically. Oh, I'm so dead, aren't I? Oh, almost. I know there's another one on this side, so I'm gonna just debuff him. Yeah, now I have to kind of use Gazan to not hit all of them. Unfortunately, here, forces are less useful in multiplayer, but... Oh, the music's kicking in, for sure. Got excited. Oh my gosh, I actually kill with magic. Nice Lapis Cannon for the group. There we go, I did it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do some red eye DTTF later, don't get me wrong. That's that's still on the agenda at some point. Oh, we got the falls door, that's unfortunate. Oh, well, I guess we'll go kill falls. Just, whatever. I was hoping for the other door, because that would have been some good value. But whatever. You take what the game gives you. Unfortunate. Yeah, I was uh, showcasing the the drop items in there, and I was I was semi flexing that I got a spread needle with it while just trying this quest in single player. So I was like, oh, the value is free. Oh, I believe he's getting bullied. Repel cleave. We'll get to Hulkley. There we go. We got the important buff on Hulkley. He's doing the spin. Oh, do they knock me down and don't even multi-hit me? Oh, I'm at like the perfect HP for this quest. Oh, love it. I don't have to care at all right now. So that means... I don't know if that means I... Uh, I might have to switch off my three seals for the other thing to not kill me. We'll see. Is it still open? Just, I love me grancing that thing full screen, by the way. It's a note of the boss. I'm gonna debuff. I'm gonna let Imperimeter focus on damage here since he's got the, the big old gun, as it were. It'll be my job to not die. 
mission accomplished. So yeah, so sadly we only get box rares from Fall. Maybe we'll see a Super Calibre of some sort. Uh, well, let's find out if I can survive this. I can. That's actually super... Oh, that multi hit me. That kind of sucks. Uh, I'm going to say no to most of these spinners. If the team is willing to face tag, I'm willing to heal and spam Gafoe. Be real with you. Like, listen. I've learned that's what my secret strength is. Being super dummy with Gafoe. So there we go. I finally did that strat on stream. <laughs> I just face tank it. I'm like... Three seals gives 33 resist. Glide Divine gives 15. My armor is okay. I'm like, maybe I survive? Without Glide Divine, that's very questionable if I survive that. But if I'm close, it doesn't really matter. I have no idea what I was aiming for there. But that was a fumble. Oh, I actually don't have Foley set up on this. Oh, that's awkward. Uh, well, do what I can, I guess. I mean, at least that's a little bit of damage. I'll have to fix that to put a uh, Foey there. I went to go use it and I was like, wait a minute, that's rough Foey. Oops. I mean, to be fair, how often are you going to take purple ID to falls? Let's be honest. I'm pointing. I'm like, there's there's where Red Ring would have been if this was a Red Ring ID. But hey, we can still end up with the Caliber or something dumb. Forty hit scepter, disappointing. Okay, so we'll do one more on purple ID to see if we could get mines, and then if it if it's frugal with us, we'll just play some orange ID or Viridian. We'll 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 coin toss. So lost some money, but I'm gonna get a lot of money back. That's fine. Oh, we finished the soundtrack. What is up next on the agenda? Well, I can't listen to Dragon Ball online. Something tells me that would be copyrighted to high heaven. So let's do this. Maybe one day we'll play this on stream. I kind of meant to do the second game in this series. There we go. Got my money. Yeah, this time I at least want to see mines. So I'll make the game real quick. Order inventory out. We have way too many materials. I was gonna say, what was the Fomarl's Fomar ult M? I think we were talking about this before, as being like overly dramatic. I think they said it was for the Fomarl. Mm -mm -mm. Castlevania 60. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that is something. Castlevania 64 to Electric Boogaloo. Oh no. Let's see if we can get the mines path. That is, again, it's gonna be like a bazillion vices. The worst that happens is you get spread needle chances, uh, technically cycle one chances. Unfortunately, falls is like the only one where you don't really get that much value. But it's unlucky we lucked into that one, sadly. Because every other route is still like, oh, like oh, this is good. You want this, but no, not not for purple. We're just gonna go for a good old stun lock here. And the fact that you can rip away that dragon and kill those lilies in single player is so huge. He's already dead. Yeah, this wave's a bit more awkward. It's mostly just ice. Can't believe that knocked me down. That's so sad. We'll do what we can there. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is like the perfect wave to rip away, because you can hit the Lily here, and it actually stunlocks every Lily. So good. Like, I just shut down every single Lily from ever doing anything against this team. It's all that matters at the end of the day. You just walk up, Rebarda, assert dominance, walk away. Oh, that is a super rest of range. Holy, you never. <laughs> I always forget. If she gets the enhanced rest of range, but then you put the little carousel or umbrella on, it's just absolutely ludicrous. Oh, we got falls again. That's unfortunate. We'll play it through to the end. Yeah, the downside is that Viridian Mines is kind of bad now. So, before the rewards were split a bit more evenly, now it's like, if you do get this path as Viridian, it's insane. Because you have to think about it this way. If you get Grass Assassins instead of Falls, you get B101. If you get Falls, you get Red Ring. That's so like, oh no, the value, whatever will I do? So again, I'm just gonna stunlock the lilies for a little bit, give the team like a million years to kill them. Put myself some skill dips in there. Some of the pan arms. Fantasy Star Zero. This one? This one is not Fantasy Star Zero. I want that power material, though. I mean, you have the right idea that it's on the handheld. Ah, mm -mm 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 -mm. uh, there we go. Good call. I was gonna say, you watch. If I switch to Viridian... It's gonna be like, you know what? We're only going to mines. <laughs> like, actual sadness. It's like, oh no. Oh, I love my Rebarda spam here. Up down this room real nice. And Belra just got absolutely devastated. I was gonna say, my damage is terrible against Sorcerer. If I kill it, it would be a miracle. Darn you, Sorcerer. The only thing that makes forces unhappy in single player. In ruins. Multiplayer just ultra sucks. How much can be done about that, honestly? Just whip out the old ATP, I guess. <clears throat> we'll do our best to freeze him. Get more targets for the Hue cast. Yeah, like if I wasn't sure what game this was, I would hear this and I'd be like, it has to be an entry in game. <laughs> Just like zero doubt. I'm like, <laughs> heard a little bit of the victory theme in the other one. Welcome, remote battery. I see you, I see you saw the uh, the skill diff popping up. Actually, it's not even an add-on. There's a new file called Advanced Config. You can rename the Mistex Experience. Like, you might notice it just says XP instead of EXP. I fixed it, chat. <laughs> if you want to put silly things in there, you can. You can even have, uh... Apparently, when an enemy resists, you can do it. So if you want to change the word resist when you three seals block something, I could technically make it to say you got three sealed or something. I don't know if there's a limitation on the number of characters. X EXP, oh no. I could. That's what I'm saying. Chat should, chat should do it. And I can reset so it takes place. If chat wants to see stupid things on my screen, by all means. I feel like if I made it an option where you pay points, it would just be a bid war. <laughs> Everybody would just constantly spam it with something. Yeah. Welcome, Remote Battery. Hope you're doing well. I don't think I want to do anything in this room. I'm going to leave it up to the team. I'm going to debuff where I can. Recognize that I can't do anything with Dark Ringers and multiplayer. Move on. 
doing great. That's good to hear. I'm now looking it up. Nice level up, I guess. I don't think it takes the updates live. I'll see if it did or not when something dies. No, it did not. Okay. I feel like it only checks at the beginning anyway. But we'll, we'll do a reset after this one because I go switch characters regardless. Yeah, we could customize the text there. Our last chance at some decent items. Go ahead and debuff what we can. And we don't really want to trigger them. If they're already attacking like that, we might as well do some damage. Tip them out a little more for chat. Maybe we'll freeze them. You can see our damage versus them in multiplayer is just pitiful. I don't know why they made them like so unkillable. It's kind of unfortunate. Like, I don't mind them being a little tankier, but like you doing like 2% of their health at max level, MSC is insane. I don't know why they left it like that. Kill a couple of DLDs. There we go. Perfect. Man, we really got falls twice. That's unlucky. Whatever. I was gonna say, you watch. If I switch to Viridian, we're going straight to mines. <laughs> Just be like, joke's on you. <laughs> you thought you could profit, but there's only suffering. <clears throat> so what we'll do... We're gonna do a third run, but if it gives falls again, we leave. <laughs> we just, we, we just, if we see the path, we'll, we'll do the reset now. I just, I just want to see the other path once with purple ID. The worst thing that happens, it's like a, not a 20, it's like a 12 Lily reset. It's not the highest reset ever. We'll take it, I guess. It grants, it grants, idiot. I'm not walking over to you. Ouch. Put out some stacks, because more likely than not, something near us will be vulnerable. Ooh, I got multi-hit. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I love that it does- I love how they do a static amount of damage, but then sometimes they just quadra-hit you and you die. Classic. Classic PSO moment. Right, chat? Like, they do set damage, but you saw that it did insano damage to me. I guess I'll move around. Goodbye, enemies. So we're gonna perform one reset and see what happens. Because then after that, statistically, we have to be at a point where we start seeing mines. There's just nothing else it could be. Alright, if Fault doesn't move, I have Kifoe set up. Perfect. I forgot to set up fully. I'm a fool. I grants better than nothing, I guess. Out of Bowie range. Although funny enough, I might be able to kill with good Bowie. I really desperate. Alright, we're gonna set up for it. We're gonna try to kill the boss with good Bowie sacks. We're going for it, chat. 
It might work. Yeah! Get stacked on falls. Get out of here. I'll deal with you. Oh. Oh, I actually moved in the cutscene. Yeah, that that was that was the that was a disrespectful Gaboe sack chat. I'm like, listen, listen. If I don't have regular Foey, dodge stacks. Save the frames. Mm mm mm. Aw, oh, 40 hit Ripper, boo. Got excited for a second. Charge all the lasers. Congratulations. So sad. As I said before, we'll we'll go. We'll try to force the mines run, so that way we could say we did it, and then we'll we'll switch character IDs. So we're still sort of taking advantage of rare enemy week. No lilies yet, and unfortunately, we're also getting the path that has the least lilies, which is so sad. Because the room, if we go to the mines, by the way, is like 16 lilies by itself, and then there's three in another room. It's kind of crazy. So far, no spread needles, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, like, like Purple Ruins is not terrible. Like, Book of Hidagata from Chaos Sorcerer is kind of okay. Ringer's Arm is whatever, but so far, no Heavenly Arms. We didn't see any of those. No Guardianas, no spread needles. Like, there is potentially value in Ruins. It's not, like, super high, obviously, compared to Vines, but... There are the right enemy types to give us value. It's just unfortunate. Come on, give it give us the give us the mines. <laughs> give us the mines and no vault off. We earned it, I swear. I promise. There we go. I still have never played Etri in Odyssey 3. I think the untold version of it came out recently-ish. Oh, finally a vice. About time, I was gonna say. <laughs> That's one of the point that is the one of the whole points of this area. We finally saw it. That way if we do leave, at least we could say we did some vice hunting. Sadly though, no hit percentage. Ooh, Millily. Hello. You wanna you wanna give a little psycho one? <laughs> you wanna you wanna be a little friendly, Millily? Oh, uh, no psycho one. We tried. Getting PD there would be the biggest heartbreak of all time. I got HP restorate. I didn't even get money. How sad. So we're, we're sort of doing rare enemy week correctly. We're doing it on one of the worst rare enemies, but it's technically correct. Alright, we're resetting. I'm not dealing with this. Slash lobby. What is this? Take us to mines. I believe in you. <laughs> so we, we failed <laughs> three 50-50s in a row. If you count every time it brings us to falls as a fail, then we failed six. It's a bit unfortunate. Just want to see one purple mines. You could do a game. I'm happy we at least saw a mill lily. I cannot say that normally when we do these things, we see that we actually see the rare enemies. Also, that victory music would have 100% told me a trian. Although, which one? I don't know if that would have narrowed it down for me. Okay, come on, game. Be kind. Rare enemy week achieved. Yeah, we didn't see Kondryu. Which is a shame, because I did fight two off stream. I did four runs, saw two Kondryus. I'm like, you know what? That's a good ratio. Then we, we evened it back out to two out of six. Like, never mind. 
How unfortunate. I don't know why I used fire there. I know they're weak to ice. Lightning's not bad though for the other enemy time. Just grants him into oblivion real quick. Yeah, funny enough, we saw the rare enemy for Lily here, where there's like barely any, but then we played episode four. We saw zero, except for Del Lily or Del Rappy, which there was like at least five to six times the amount per quest. So silly. Anyway, I'm gonna shut down this Lily super hard with Rivarda. That's at least something nice in multiplayer. But this quest doesn't hard punish you. Although, funny enough, in the Lily room, as long as you have Cure Paralysis, Rafoe is so good in this room. I was gonna say, yeah. Uh, now, now we're playing the roulette. Come on, game. I just want to show the other side once. Wow. Can't make it up. I mean, we got a Photon Drop. <laughs> it's like, are we re are we really gonna fail it five times in a row? Are, are we are we gonna do it? <laughs> so funny. I mean, at this point, <laughs> you might as well just pump it to anguish or something. That way, the game difficulty reflects the state of the party's mentality. Yeah, so this is why you don't do full-on hunts of this, and why I would recommend a more balanced ID. Which, surprisingly, orange ID, as I said before, gets value in both areas. So it might be slightly more valued, but if you do the resets, I think Viridian is much better. Just because, obviously, choosing between Red Ring and V101, that's, that's a lot of value. So it's interesting that Viridian still has a V101 hunt ID while doing falls. Because basically nobody has that anymore. So it's interesting that it exists. Albeit inconsistent routes to falls. I was like, don't make me make Imperameter make the game. I see he's got the green ID. <laughs> or Viridian, I mean. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, like, don't don't threaten me with falls again. You're gonna regret it, game. I'm gonna start taking advantage of it. I mean, yeah, Rebarda is super good here. Bonk. Come on, game. You could do it. I believe in you. As I said before, I'm not even mad if I get orange ID in the other path. I was like, wait a minute. I actually get their best items? There we go. So I would really recommend that you have Cure Paralysis on if you're a force here, because this room is actually brutal. But I'm going to show you what happens when you have Rafoe. See, this is the Lily room. But watch this. Nope. Nope. You just get to tell them, nope. Oh, were you trying to paralyze us? Oh, what a shame. Oh, if you were, like, solo Humar here, you'd be, like, so dead. <laughs> but in the forest, you're like, wait a minute, this whole room's refoliable? Free. <laughs> I was like, wow, a room where the forest is actually genuinely the best character. No contest. I would not want to do that with solo ranger, be real with you. I'd be like, no, thank you. But sadly, we did get to the Lily Room, but no rares in there. That would have been amazing if we saw, like, two mil lilies for sure in there. Ouch. He more just these anti-dark ring, oh no. It takes so long to clear. He's not doing anything. Oh, that's right, there's another wave. I so rarely go this way. So again, even for Viridian resets, you would still at least clear these rooms for the, uh... Well, nah, you wouldn't go to the Lily Room. You'd skip the Lily Room. Unless you had a Viridian Force. Yeah. Clearing that just takes too much time. You would Disca. Forces, on the other hand, they could kill it in, like, six casts. They don't care. It's like, oh no, what an inconveniencing die. Yes, we get another Lily Ring where I'm at. 
Which again, is controlled really easily by Rifoe. Again, not really that threatening. That many targets can be kind of annoying for a ranger. So, I guess it just really depends what mode we're playing. Single player or multi. Yeah, with the force? Oh, it's like this quest is such a dream. It's it's like actually decent. Like, we're, we're in caves and we're getting 100 XP a second. Like, where else are you going to see that much XP it, without doing a boss in episode 1? You never usually see that. Like, like, what would that be? Like, Terrell's ego at best? What would potentially rival 100 XP a second in a quest like this? Still getting so many other checks. So ideally we'll get the bonus room. If we don't get the bonus room, it's not the end of the world. It just means somebody needs to stun lock bow up. Interesting, we went this way. So we're going to be very careful to try not to spook the, uh, the leader units, because there'll be, as I said before, nine chances at Yashminikov. Which will be kind of fun. I do like that item. So I gotta be careful not to Gafoe stack, because I don't want to spook him. If I was any other ID, I would just Gafoe stack. But I'm like, here? I'm like, no, I gotta make sure we kill these. For real. There we go. That's one Yashminikov chance down. But anyway, if you have a Rifoe merge or something similar, now is the time to switch into it. For all those fellow forces out there. Parameter will continue to do a pew pew gun though. His pew pew gun good. But for me, I'm gonna continue to do the old classic. Yeah, let's see some star atomizers. Free up a slot. Fortunately, this room has a Barans in it. I'm gonna go ahead and debuff the whole room long distance. What's kind of nice though is that when they leap at you, they actually form like a wall to protect you from Barans, which is kind of funny. I feel like um, they're like the bodyguards in a movie, and they're like, get down! <laughs> just, they just eat all the missiles from that. That's like one of the few times I'm not annoyed by like a Baran spawn surrounded by enemies. Just due to how the enemy behavior works in that scenario. We're gonna get a million Sinnoh red chances, which is not the best in purple, but... Yeah, I can't hit the dub switch. It's on the left side. There we go. Dead instantly. This easy kill. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of chances. Oh, let me slow this guy down. Oh, I actually got the freeze. Oh, there we go. I helped. Let's see, every cannabin. Potentially very good on orange ID. Slow him down a little with Rebarda. Give the team a chance. Nicely done, team. So normally, as I said before, if, it, if I was playing anything other than purple, I would just be Gafoe stacking this whole quest. Gafoe also works. We're essentially going to come into a room where there's like three leader units at once. So I want to make sure I definitely do not Gafoe on that wave, because that would be a lot of Yashmitakov chances down the drain. Which kind of makes up for a quest normally, because I want to say in most mines quests there's like less than five. This says double the chance. So if it takes us twice as long to get there, we're going to make sure the can of weed's actually rewarding. There we go. Sadly no Yashmitika. Get out of here, can of bins. Like the spooky music. This would have been very appropriate for Halloween. What song is this for future reference? Unknown Menace. Okay, we're just gonna work on debuffing for the team. Make their life easy. Chip them out a little with some Rifoes. Here I think is where the leader units start coming in in mass. Yeah, like this this in particular, I wanna make sure I don't mess it up. It's gonna do nothing but Rivarda. No! Chat didn't kill the leader unit there. That's such a shame. 
Yeah, be really careful. I, I, those they they need to die. One more leaner unit, I think, left. Uh, let's use some Ripoe here. I think they're all dead. Rip one Yash Medicop chance. Oh! Oh, Vice. I got excited. I thought it was Yash Medicop. Vice is still good, potentially, depending on what it is. Oh, I got the Freeze. Nice. Rip Health Leaf. I got the freeze again. Wow. My own freeze trap. I did it. I'm not sure where the switch is for them. I've seen... I thought somebody hit it before. I just don't remember where it is. It's like under the platform or something weird. It's in a place you don't normally see it. I forget if it's like off this pledge. Somebody hit it last time when we played. I'm gonna see if I can see it by, like, walking on one of these platforms. I mean, we can kill them normally. Yeah, I forget where it is. I mean, I'll still kill them. I was just looking to see. Cause I feel like it's one of those ones where it is, like, hidden in the room. I just don't remember where. Oh, I got lasered. Yeah... I'll have to go back and look at the video, because we dealt with this room before. And we did not kill them the normal way. Are they, is it, like, really high in the ceiling? Hmm. Unsure. I definitely want to go back and review the tapes, as it were. But kind of unfortunate. If we can't find the switch, this does take a while. Yeah, so there's like basically two paths we could get. This is one path, so... I don't think this leads to the Sinnoh Red Room. It's interesting. That's a little unfortunate. But whatever. We'll get there eventually. Take the dye fluid. Yeah, that's one of those ones. If somebody opened that up in the quest reader, I would love to know where it is. Yeah, so we skipped the Sinnoh Red Room, which is unfortunate. It just takes us to the boss, right? Yeah, it takes us to the boss. Oh well. Well, good luck, team. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing it as Fodu, man. Well, we might as well just kill the boss since we're here. Get that XP. Hmm. My Rappy is just jumping up and down. So excited. It's like, I'm helping too. It takes thunder. I was say, I'm hitting it somewhere. Goodbye, boss. I love the happy music as we're killing bosses. Yeah, this is the Force's worst nightmare, so I'm not gonna bother doing anything. Barter it a couple times, I guess. Better than nothing. But I am not the DPS in this room, by far. Oh, rewarded with the photon drop. 
I was gonna say, if nothing else, the boss boxes are always decent. Alright, so I'm gonna switch which character I'm using. Still gonna play a force. We'll go to orange ID. If the game wants to troll, the game control. Yeah, I'm not sure where it is. I There's like a weird way to hit it, I just don't remember where. I don't know if you'd be in a different room or something. Yeah, it, it might be something weird like it's not in the main room. So you'd have to like go back a room or something dumb. I'm honestly trying to recall. It's definitely not in a place you were meant to hit it. I will put it that way. And I'm pretty sure on stream we, we did go there and we did not full clear that. So it could be in the previous room. I think if we ever come across that way again, I'm actually going to leave and see if it's in the other room. It could be something like that. Okay, so I'm going to switch what character I'm using. Do... D-Bank 2, actually. So similar premise, except we're going to get interesting value no matter where we go i mean i don't know about you chat i would like a profit to motown for my phone world if i can't get cycle wand <laughs> we can be real with you so i might as well bring phone world in here So we'll do like two runs of this, and then we could mix it up. They're not very long runs, at least. Oh, wait, I'm on it. Well, yeah, whatever. I was like, ah! I was, if it was Anguish 3, I would have reset. Uh, I'm going to leave it. It's fine. It'll be fine, chat. Except the Anguish. <laughs> Yeah, actually, what was surprising in Parameter, I think I put it in the chat before, but this quest is a force. I was getting 180 XP a second. I was like, wait a minute, this is competitive with episode 4. I was like, wait a minute. I mean, obviously, once I left caves, it was unplayable, but until that point, I was like, wow, this XP is stupid. Double add up time for sure. Yeah, and I guess if you're going like really reset heavy runs anyway, if you're if the team is overgeared, I don't see this as an issue. Anguish two or three are still kind of off the off the table. The only thing to be wary of is that it does increase the level of me get the lilies used. So anguish three means they could almost hit you from the other end of the room. So if you're standing where the Nano Dragon is, you won't get hit, but if you go beyond the Nano Dragon line, you just kind of die. <laughs> just FYI. I found that out from experience. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and initiate the stun lock here versus the Lilies. I'll also slowly chip out the- Oh, I got hit with the Lily. Oh, nobody hit the other Lily. That's so sad. Rip. Rip me. Debuff time for sure. Now we'll just feel sad every time we see Mill Lily. But fortunately, I don't think that'll happen that often. And again, just really easy stun locks on the entire room to give the team a lot of chances to kill the Lilies. I'll look at the team on that one. A Nano Dragon's coming over. I 
pass the level 15. Eh. Fun. Yeah, sadly, Orange doesn't get anything too crazy from Grass Assassin. If it did, it would be, like, probably the best idea for this quest. That's fun. Let's get some profits of Motav. <laughs> if we get to Falls again, I'm gonna be so sad. I want to see the secret path at least once on one of the routes. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy. I go ahead and tell them no real quick here. These items. them a little bit by the team some time. Oh, hopefully he's got to step away briefly. Just as the music's kicking in. I've heard a version of this song in Mystery Dungeon. And I've heard it also, and I want to say Etrian 5. Any versions of the song? Yeah, so if, if you come through the other side, sometimes lilies will spawn on this area, but you can't reach them. It's so sad. Like an actual tease. A good song. I'm gonna heal so I don't die to that. XP per second, it's still kind of insane, to be honest with you right now. Even though sorcerers are very annoying to kill. Lawn profits a Motab. You could do it. Drop for the team. I just want to see the stun animation of Rabarda to give the team a chance. There we go. in the corner for real this time. You buff everything. It's spam ice. I mean, I really supposed to square Rabarda, right? Rabarda stuff. Downside of that. I even have my Rabarda merge on. Might as well as commit to the role as being the party freeze trap. Could be useful. Commitment is real, chat. Yeah. About to grant that thing out of existence. Ooh, that did a lot of damage. Oh, hello. 
I'm getting pushed really far away from the team there. That kind of sucks. Got Van Gogh. Somebody got Dango as I got Dango. Oh no. I'm getting hit by the stupid uh, horse. The horse is kind of a problem. I'm not gonna lie. Sorcerer is somewhat annoying, but horse is way more annoying. The guy needs to perish immediately. Back to Ice Town. I'm gonna stand in this side of the room. What oh, Musashi found, nice. Yeah, Orange Hat, as I said before, Orange had a surprising number of good drops and ruins, so I don't mind going here, honestly. Uh oh. Hopefully, you're getting bullied. Got through. Oh no. I didn't realize I was in range. Oh no, I didn't realize I was in range. Okay, right, there we go. Four life choices were fixed. Just backed up slightly. Okay, get rid of the claws, because those were annoying. I will gladly take escape doll. Don't give us falls. <laughs> give us the bonus room. The bonus room is so much value. I mean, aside from the random material, which, as I did confirm off stream, it can give you TP material, by the way. One of the few quests that could give us TP material. Okay, <laughs> we need everybody in the middle. Oh no. We're a little slow entering. That's fine too. You know what? This is also fine. If we just hold the line here, good enough, honestly. I'm just gonna spam Rivarda here. <laughs> New strats for anguish mode. Hold the line, chat. <laughs> Don't let them through. But yeah, there's gonna be chaos fingers on either side. We could let them charge at us, technically, but then the indie bell res are gonna punish us. So I think what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little further step forward so I'm lined up a little less with the party. If I get run over, I get run over. I accept my fate. Make sure I debuff what I can here. Yeah, that's fine. I accept my fate. I am bait. Let the team clear this out. I'm unfortunately getting knocked down repeatedly, but I'll get there eventually. Oh, I'm trying to move out of the way. Just so many enemies here, unfortunately. On the plus side, I can spam my heal. There we go. Kill a couple of these. Just one more Del D dead, and I think we'll be fine. That's fine. There we go. Now I'm no longer lined up. Yeah, I kind of got bullied towards the uh, the group again. Come on, bonus path. Bonus path, bonus path. No, come on. Oh, that orange bonus path is so good. There's Sinnohs there. Oh, so sad. Rip. We, we've gotten falls so consistently, it's actually scary. Maybe it's a sign to switch to Viridian. Like, unreal how many times we got falls. So just so that you're aware, it's Sinnoh Red and Sinnoh Blue are both in that other room, which Orange ID likes both. And it's also Chaos Springer. Or actually, no, no, it's not Chaos Springer in that one. But it is the Sinnoh Blue and Sinnoh Red to some extent, so you still get chances that their minds drops, even going the Ruins route. So there's... The only, the only bad choice is getting full. <laughs> Just literally. So sad. Oh boy. Well, I guess I could switch it up a little since we do have a force. I could bring in uh, one of my alternate Viridian characters. It's been a while since I played like my Rocket Seal, for example. Just embrace the traps. Chloe stacking should be on point here. It also is funny because it messes with their hit point total. 
I did do like Anguish 2 falls, and I was like, oh no, the spinners don't die in two Gafoes. What do I do? Wait, let me just heal the team while we're here. Team's around here somewhere, I swear. There we go, I found Hulkleaf. So just be aware, the boss is gonna have a lot more health than you think. Although, honestly, with this much ATP, it might not matter. Yeah, like that barely made a difference. It is funny how little of a difference it makes in Anguish. It we're basically just playing like pre-damage cancel clear. <laughs> like it's just just kind of like one of those things. Just gotta get used to it. I'm gonna start spamming Gifoi now. Oh, the bait. Oh, Chad, it was not near me. Rip team. What is this boss doing? I'm gonna try to flood the screen with Gafoe, so that way you need to... I'll try to help you survive with more Gafoe stacks, so that way you don't need to dodge. Just, just focus on damage. I'm just gonna stack. I'm gonna put out as many as I can. I'll even heal. No, hopefully just in the middle. I can't help out cleave on that one. Oh, I just had a range of the shifter. So sad. I tried. Yeah, suddenly forces take on a big role here <laughs> on English. They they could just face tank all the elemental spells thanks to three seals. Although funny enough, I don't think I was using three seals. No, I wasn't. That's fine, though. At least I do, like, a bazillion damage for Fireball, to be honest with you. Look at that damage. Wow, we still one-cycled it on Anguish? That should tell you how busted our damage is. <laughs> right, chat? Like, come on. Even with the health boost, didn't help. I still got one-cycled. Silly falls. Four falls. Supreme shifter range, yeah. That definitely helped. Level up, congratulations. Yeah, the only thing that's a little rough on Anguish, it's not the HP totals, it's more Freeze Trap not working on Chaos for your multiplayer. In single player, that doesn't matter at all. It's like, okay, if you're playing Force, you're like, I don't, I don't really freeze them that often anyway. But anyway, we'll, we'll not do the next one on Anguish. I just didn't feel like resetting. <laughs> I just committed to the run. So yeah, I would say like Ruins is probably Anguish 1 would be the highest I would ever want to do. But honestly, Cave, single player, Anguish 3, kind of easy. You would think it would be really difficult, but no. It's kind of just like playing multiplayer mode by yourself. Except you actually do the right damage. So they have like multiplayer health, but single player resists. And I'm like, kind of okay with that to be honest. Alright, let's switch over to a different character. I'll bring in more damage. Actually, I forgot to uh, put this away, my bad. Put this away real quick. And then I'll reset the game, since I did change the text. I'll get it started. I'll do Viridian. So on the off chance, you watch chat. We got so many, so many falls in a row. It's gonna be like you want Quadra Mines. <laughs> the game, the game feels like just actively spiteful. <laughs> RNG is something else. Okay, so that should take our latest settings. Although, sadly, we're not going to see the three seals text. But we'll see the other things. Okay, we're bringing in a semi-serious character. I guess I could re- I guess I could change my rocket seal to be a different one, although I don't mind Viridian Episode 2, to be honest. 
All right, so now we're switching it over to the value hunt. So if we get caves and we go to ruins, we're going to get a ton of V101 chances and we're going to potentially get red ring. And if it doesn't give us red ring, it gives us like 30 something extra chances of V101, which I'm, I'm kind of okay with. So as long as we get ruins, we're fine. Oh, I forgot this one was also an Etrian Odyssey 3. Voice the sword. Yeah, w one of the many versions of the song. It was so good to hear it in Mystery Dungeon. There we go. Sure, for remote battery, updated the text. Oh, I got skill diffed, damn. And yes, chat, it does say pay to win every time I use charge shot. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and crowd control with the big gun. I can't tell if XP is cutting off the thing or if it just... I'll get a better look at it here, I think. Oh no, it says the full thing. Okay, good. We finally got the... Okay. You know what, chat? We, we've accepted that it is taking us to ruins. We're just like, it's fine. We're just gonna play around it. We'll do the meta run. So either way, I'm not mad. If we don't get falls, I don't care. I just I just get more V101s. I need them anyway. Sadly, I don't have Rafoe here. Be careful. The damage is so good. I'm freezing him solid. I've had enough. I'm saving most of my freeze traps for the next area. I guess I could use a couple more here and there, but I'm like, listen, I, I'm, I'm through playing around. I'm having my revenge on the Chaos Springers. They had their fun. Now it's my turn. I'm going to be using it literally basically every room, maybe twice. Stuff like that, already covered. Yeah, sadly, they're actual ruin enemies, which is kind of okay on Viridian. Speaking of which, what are the stats of my Heaven Striker? 25% dark. Okay. Pretty good. I'll take it. I'll take it over the zeros. Oh, sure would be sure would be a shame if I put a freeze trap where you spawn. What a shame. It's actually deleted. Uh right, Chaos Springer, you spawn over here, right? Perish. Oh, I did it slightly too early. What a shame. Oh well. That's why you have multiple freeze traps. <laughs> right, Chan? I I'm through playing around with them. Like, they're not getting a turn ever again. Get out of here. Ooh. The power of dual cast. <laughs> We're like, mm mm. Fingers right arm, nice. Uh, put a little happy freeze trap in the middle.
Unfortunately, I was getting kind of hard bullied in the corner. It is what it is there. Deal with you. Deal with you. You know what? You want to play that game? I got paralysis. I don't need frozen shooter for this. Oh right, I need to feed the other mag. Remember that that's a thing that I have to do. Just so much raw damage. Holy. Yeah, we're 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 done. We're like, mm -mm, pack your bags, enemies. I still got like nine freeze traps left. Like, get out of here. Oh, why was it? Oh, because I'm confused. It's like, why was I randomly switching targets? It sucks. Another freeze trap out here. That helps significantly. Ooh, I'm out of range. Fortunate. Do I not have the P502 on? Oh, I don't. That would explain it. I was like, I feel like I'm missing it more than normal. I was like, makes sense. I had Heavenly Resist on because I was doing solo uh, TTF runs for Spread Needle, doesn't matter. I'll wait for the group a little bit here, but I'm gonna go in and just delete these idiots. A little, a little happy freeze trap here. Put a nap, another happy freeze trap here. No, as long as I stay on one side of the room, I can shut down an entire Chaos Springer spawn. That's all I'm looking to do. Make the life easy. Oh, another one attacked me. That's unfortunate. The other one was not controlled, but that's fine. We'll get there eventually. One right door, right door. Or we'll do falls. Okay, finally. Fun. I want some V101 chat. Fun. Give it to chat. Give the V101 to us. We earned it. Remember, every grass assassin that you're about to witness is our V101 chance. Remember that when we see some of these waves. Although, I just realized, before I go to this next area, because we're going here, I need to refresh my traps. There's no way I'm doing this room with three freeze traps. Sorry, I'm gonna go back for the healing circle. It's in the northern door. We normally skip it because it doesn't matter, but in this case, it absolutely matters. <laughs> I'm just gonna go restock it. So if I had been smarter, I would have walked over here prior to coming over to the right side. I'm gonna save a little bit of time. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, normally I just skip that room because I'm just assuming falls, but I stayed on the right I stayed on the right side just in case it was here, but I could have kept going to the north to save a little bit of time. <laughs> Whatever. Speaking of which, let's feed Talesius more power. There we go. Look at that, chat. We're mag feeding. We did it. I remembered to feed the mag. <laughs> it's been sitting there unloved. Like, one day it'll be there. There we go. I was trying to remember if it was, like, Alt W for wave or Alt W or Alt H for high. I figured it out. Anyway, just remember, every single Grass Assassin is a chance of be one of one Yeah, this is the kind of room where it's good to test the item indicator. There's also a decent amount of Del Sabers, so <laughs> there's a lot of other IDs that potentially get value from getting the alternate path here. You can see, you basically want to freeze trap every single wave. I saw the Hugh Castle already put one out. We're gonna believe in Dango's traps.
yeah, just, I don't want to see them do anything. Listen, they had their chance. This is, this is also why I said before we're going back, we're getting the traps, because there's just so many Sinnohs. These things in particular, uncontrolled, are just a nightmare mixed with the other enemy types. But you can see what I was talking about before, where, like the Sinnoh blues are like actual value for orange ID. That's why like I'm not mad to do ruins, because if we get to this room, I'm like, oh, okay. So it's like I get a little mini mines in my ruins. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just look at look at how many insano waves we're fighting here. This is also like a force's dream, because most of them are like freezeable, and then you just lightning the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these. There we go. Here's the V101 spawn. <laughs> oh man, come on. It'd be funny if we did get it. Gotta clear the room out a little more though. So good. Some mono grinders. What a room. And I'm always kind of curious about quests like these. Like, because it's spaceship, are we getting spaceship drops from these enemies, potentially? Or are we getting ruins? If you were to open boxes here, for example. I was curious. Like, I imagine it would have to be ruins boxes if they did boxes here. Because that kind of matters for uh, the, the weapon patterns. Even from these normal enemies. Yeah. So I imagine it's probably using the ruins patterns. Oh, and then we get to bully worm boss because we're Viridian. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Just keeps on giving, chat. Like, see that? Like, it's like, oh, oh no. I, I gave up Red Ring for LNK chance plus B101. I'm like, that's, I think that's a good consolation prize. I don't know about you. Like, okay. That's fine. I'll take another LNK chance. There we go. Nice and simple. So again, just more XP. Oh, sadly only a dime from the boss. And we'll still get a random material at the end. Although this quest was a little money hungry for me. I could try to use the Berserk Arm to save some cash. Speaking of which, when we finally get our challenge mode weapon done and sorted, I do want to actually spear something. We unlock spearing, but I never ended up doing it. Like, it is good, don't get me wrong, I just haven't done one yet. I should probably get one for Machine and Dark. I don't really care about native ABs at the moment. There's not really a lot of runs where I can think that would apply to me. Like, if I was doing, like, nature dark, I think it would make more sense for, like, episode 2, for example. Also, I really don't need this heavenly resist on. Let me do this. We're gonna do another run of this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love heavenly... heavenly well, I guess I should keep it just in case we get falls. I do like it for falls, because it means the boss could just legit do nothing to this character. I did remove the add-ups I was using on this character before. It was very funny. I had like 50 resist on this character for no reason. Loved it. So we'll do a couple more of these. Oh, my V502 is on another character. I'll still take a V501 for resist. Better than nothing. It's not like it's not like I'm using hell in episode one, so that that's fine. Right, Chad? It's like whatever. I'm just using it to paralyze the uh stupid Gunners. Uh, let's see what material we get. So, 241. Let's see what it gives. What gave me HP material? Eh. Now, if it gave TP material, that'd be a different story. We'll do a couple more of these. 
I like how the quest actually does feel very different depending on what our team comp is or what rooms we go to. So I don't mind doing a few of these. As I said before, we might end up rotating this in full time. Instead of just doing like so uh, solo TTF, we might just do a couple of Viridian runs of these, honestly. See if we could get falls. If we get mines, I think we reset. I I think there's literally nothing in mines. Even if we go to the bonus area, the bonus area enemies are just not good for Viridian. <sighs> I'll put a freeze trap over here. Whatever. Yo, Lily, get out of here. Oh, time drop. Oh, Mill Lily. I mean, I'll take another Heavenly Power, I guess. Or not. I apparently can't hold it. Oh, I have three Scape Dolls. I don't need that many. That's an easy draw for me. Everybody got it, at least. We passed the 50-50 check. But can we pass the real 50-50 checks? It is kind of silly how many rare lilies we've seen compared to uh, other enemies in episode 4. Like, just think about it. Oh. I forgot they could drop red sword. Oh. I mean... I get... Oh, I have monomates? Why do I have monomates? Drop these. these. I mean, I guess... Red sword farming is kind of interesting from Viridian. So yeah, these the gri the Crimson Assassins at least guarantee we get V101. If we seriously get the other path, that's so unfortunate. I guess we at least clear caves and then we reset. There's there's genuinely nothing in mines, but I could at least see an argument being made to at least clearing caves. There are a lot of checks here. An okay number of Grass Assassins. There we go. Unfortunate. Oh, they were splitting. I was wondering why the freeze didn't work. I was like, wait, what? Definitely used the right trap there. Oh wait, there's like one more wave. I keep forgetting, it's like delayed. Let's might as well do a V101 check while we're here. Get some nice XP. As I said before, like most average quests will give around 100. If, if they're like a quote unquote decent quest. to advance further in the room to deal with them. I forget, does this lead to the boss? Or not the boss, the next area. Might be one more room. Yeah. There we go. Goodbye, these walls of enemies. Be gone. Classic final impact. It was inevitable. Put a free strap over here. I was gonna say it doesn't really matter because we're 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 gonna be resetting before we go further. I don't need to be thrifty on my traps. Oh, interesting. I don't remember going this way before. 
I guess it's just another alternate. Oh, there's the, there's the evil lilies I was talking about before. This room is messed up. The fact that there could be a mill lily over there is so messed up. Like, just think about it, Chad. You know one of us is going to get trolled, in theory. <laughs> it's just, if mill lily's over there and it just drops like a million Masetta, how rude that would be. Ooh, this is quite a room. Jokes on that, my Vyashminikov. Thanks, Yashminikov. There we go. Yeah, I'd like to view this as raw PD chances with the side of Red Sword and V101. Alright, so that's it. So we'll slash lobby. Yeah, there's there's literally no point to doing mines. There is nothing anymore. They absolutely destroyed mines for Viridian. I genuinely think it's actually worse than Ping. No contest now. I mean, what do they even get anymore? I don't remember anything other than Heavenly Battle. Like, honestly, like, Viridian card, Heaven Punisher? I don't know about that. I'm not I'm not doing a full run just to fight Sinnoh Reds over there. I'm sorry. No, thank you. I guess I'll put away the Red Sword. Give it to a new player. Giant ATP beat stick is never a bad thing. Also, what's my money total like? That's probably not too bad. Way the heavenly power as well. I have five PDs. Wow. Oh, oops. I was gonna say, chat, streamer problem. I kept on PDs again in the share bank. <laughs> Sounds like I need to make trades with Hellcleave at some point. That's all that tells me. Oops. I mean, the way I think about it, if I leave one PD on every character I own, I have at least 16 floating PDs and 99 in the share bank. So we'll eventually turn one of them into like a sphere, but I'm not in a rush. I was actually thinking about if I wanted to purchase any items or do some solo runs to warm up a stream. Like, for example, I have like 5 trillion like photon crystals, so would it make sense to eventually just try to get a Master Swan or Last Raven with them? Or Last Swan, I mean. Oops, flipped the names in my head. That knows what I mean, though. I think I'll just play it on like normal or something. Since I don't need it to give me multiple items. I mean, I guess in theory, if I played on, like, Ultimate and all I wanted was Last Swan, I would at least get XP and then a combination of Centurion ability and things like that. I guess is okay. Goodbye, Nano Dragons. See, even the Viridian resets honestly aren't that bad. There's a lot of red sword chances and a few V101s. Not bad. Oh. Game, please. <laughs> so sad. We're getting trolled for real. Yeah, I guess it depends on if it takes us to the center room or not. The room we got the first time where we were around the Ring of Lilies, I like that room better. For value. It's like okay in here. Arguably, we could still skip these rooms. Okay, so don't mind me, I'm just gonna shoot at them until they perish. Oh, 
be one of one chances. Oh, chalky woods. But the I train now to C3 version. Wow, Mystery Dungeon really is just nothing but three songs, for real. Is this also called Chalky Wood? It is, okay. Ah, uh, this is the room I was hoping we go to. Like this room a little better for clears than the other one we went to. Game, please. No, come on. So sad. No, we needed Rapoe there. Rip. Uh, there should be some decent kills here. Final impact, don't care about those. Yeah, this side of the room is like, ooh, red sword, be one of ones. Come on, give it to the team. See, this just makes me want to listen to Etrian Mystery Dungeon music again. This, this really was my favorite song in the other game. No contest. I shot both my trap and Dango's trap on that one. Both of us were like, mm-mm. Not dealing with that room. Flash lobby. Yeah, that's at least like a quick fear. Come on, game, you could do it. I believe in you. Yeah, these runs are pretty much not as gear demanding as like TTF is. Since we can choose to skip things like Vault Off, which are normally a big problem for players, or skip Worm Boss if you don't have good kills. So we could just kind of play around where our strengths are with characters. We have so much ATP that falls as like ultra free, so it's like I'm not worried about that. But just in general, it's nice that you know you can you can reach falls without needing to be able to kill Vault Off in an efficient manner with the party. So the party comp you bring here could be very different than your normal boss rushes. There's a free strap over here. Free strap here. One here. Shut down. I'm just gonna shut down basically the room. Alright, this time if we get the mines again, we just reset. We'll still kill the Grass Assassins, obviously. Get our V101 chances in. Get out of here. Okay, so I think the trick is to walk forward as a cast. Put a Freeze Trap, like, right here. And then focus these guys. That's the right play. Absorb armor with slots. Don't really care about that. Okay, come on. We gotta pass. We gotta pass to 50/50 eventually. On 50/50. There we go. As the music kicks in, we're now on the right way. Yeah, this room, by the way, solo, I loved Confuse Traps here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Do, like, whatever you guys want. Watching them bully each other was hilarious to me in single player. Also, that room is very hilarious with fire magic boosts. Just explode, almost literally. Nano Dragon. Let's clear the way. I like that there's even a decent amount of Grass Assassins here. So again, no matter what path we get, I mean, it's like we either get LNK V101 with a, with a small sampling of other rares, 
before we just get falls. Like, okay. <laughs> just like, take, I'll take that value run. And the reset isn't too bad there if you get the wrong path. Just because you do get at least five chances of B101. Not terrible. Wait for the group a little more. We lost the group somewhere. Rip group. There we go. I'll spin in circles, then I'll put a freeze trap. Yeah, if I place it too early, the sorcerers don't get frozen. Very sad. Wow, there, there is some no mercy happening here. I mean, we seem to be getting a really good amount of PDs, just because there's just so many enemies to kill. I'm setting up a vine, nice, no worries. I mean, look at this, this is just unfair. I think Viridian does get something from Sorcerer, right? Don't they get a Lava's Cannon? I'll take those all day. That'd be quite the way to earn it, though, from these enemies versus the other drops. Ultimate frame, four slots. I think I actually do want to pick that up. Ooh, we don't normally go this way. Oh, this is definitely freeze trap time, for sure. I'm messing around with this. Oh, 29. Eh, I don't really need those. See, this would have been like the spread needle heaven right here. There were so many Merlins here. I froze the Dark Ringer. Charge this out of here. Nice we got to see a different path this time. It feels like it almost feels like a different quest as I said before. It's like, oh, get to go somewhere different. The enemy spawns are different. You just get immediately ambushed entering the room. Cool. Let's uh freeze this up. So I killed the majority of them at least. Get that guy away from me. Get rid of these, the chat can get in the room a little more easily. Right, now that I have V501, that's much easier to land. So many kills. <laughs> Wow, we're almost at 130 XP a second just to load on this. The so certain routes are definitely more rewarding for sure. Holy. And we haven't even hit a boss yet. That's super good XP for episode one. So I have seven free straps left. I make use of them. Yeah, use them to kill the ball claw. Red needle time for sure. I've had enough. Oh damn, I'm getting skill dipped. There we go. Just tuned in. What quest is this? Asked Calwin. This is random attack excerpts. Not Rev 1, but just the normal random attack. This quest is so good. Single player, this might be my favorite Force Quest in Episode 1. I think I've played every route, and every route is amazing for Forces. But I think it's time to shut down these enemies in particular. Tell them no real quick. Let's see if we get falls or not. Okay, I can afford another Freeze Trap down here. Kill 
kill the other one. I'm gonna put another free strap here. There we go. Ooh, a little shy. Alright, we're hoping to fight falls here, but we'll see what happens. Worst thing that happens, we just get a million people into one chances. Aw, uh, no falls. What a shame. Oh well, time to just earn a million V101s, I guess. Oh, also, three straps. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Almost made the same mistake. It's definitely, definitely freeze trap a clock here. So I guess I could have been more aggressive with freeze traps in the early area. I still had three freeze traps left. So that tells me that there's scenarios in which I could have been spamming even more. So it's good that I used 16, but I, I could do better, I think. Keep this thing some diamates as I walk. Don't mind me. Eventually we'll switch over to that mag. The superior range is here. Oops. Need to attack there. Hopefully you're doing well, Calwin. Just a reminder, every single one of these Crimson's Assassins is potentially a big payday. Come on, gimme gimme. I'm gonna delay shooting that just so that they spawn in a bit more. I think Hildator might be able to spawn in rare here. I'm not really sure. I haven't seen one yet. Glad you're doing well. You can see utter chaos is happening on the screen. The raw amount of enemies here is actually phenomenal. I mean, just, just look at this. So, I mean, if you have a lot of rangers, this quest is fun. Or if you're playing solo, force is extremely powerful here. But just think of it this way, all those Sinnohs, those grass assassins, they die to fire. So if you have Gafoe stacks down, mm, just melt. Oh yeah, it is a hilarious amount of enemies. It's so good. It's definitely one of those ones where if you don't have all 20 traps, you definitely should have multiple people with traps. But man, is it worth it. Look at the XP. We're almost at 130 XP a second. 132. Actual insanity. Here it comes. So these, the, so this is the funny wave. This is every single one of these is V101. Come on, give us one. Gimme, gimme. Sorry, Grass Assassins. Also, this room is very funny as a force. They all die to one spell. Oh, well, I did not receive one. Maybe chat did. Seems like it is not the case, sadly. But hey, that's a lot of items. So we ended at almost 140 XP a second. Which again, really, really good. It's not like top level of episode 4, but it's definitely high end of episode 1. Oops, I keep forgetting you gotta select the other option. Well, time to go punish the worm boss, I guess. Because, you know, when you're Viridian, you just choose to be what in LNK, I guess. So I guess I'll ask the chat. I'm willing to go for at least, like, another, let's say, hour and 20 minutes. Do you want to switch quests or continue doing this quest? In theory, we'll eventually fight Falls. Oh, I actually have invincibility. Nice. I'm actually going to use my charge arm here. My cannon, if I could hit the heavy shot with Cannon Rouge, I would use it, but no, no sense of doing that over a charge shot at that point. We ended at 143 XP a second. Not bad. That mono grinder. I'll let chat decide what they want to do next. So if there's any requests for episode 1, episode 2, episode 4... Sadly, still not even beat again. But we're getting close.
Yeah, 104,000 XP, not bad. I was thinking there is a truly horrendous quest we could try, but it makes no sense to do it during Rare Enemy Week. That, that'll be its own special session at some point. Alright, so let's see. I'm at one mine, one luck. So I'm 41411. Let's see what we get here. What random material did I get? Oh, I got TP material. There we go. Nice. That's what you want to see. The reward. So hey, I actually made money in that quest. Kind of nice. I was gonna say, if the team doesn't have any other suggestions, we'll just do this quest again. I don't really care. Should probably put away the TP material though. That's gonna eat some space in my inventory. Thank you for playing with us, Dango. Hopefully you had a good time. Chat a moment or so if they want to hop in. Yeah, my secret tech to surviving the boss when I fight falls is if I wear a heavenly resist, I don't get knocked down anymore by most things. So I'll just try and make my way through it. Check where we are on the song list. The vengeful god in the dark ocean abyss. How many songs left? Close that, don't need that. Close that, don't need that. Okay, so I'm just assuming it's the three of us. Yeah, we're so close to even beat again. But just not quite there. Sort our inventory out a little bit. Not a, I don't super care about Endless Nightmare 2. I would rather do this quest if we're going to do a Caves quest, to be honest. Come on, V101. Show up for the chat. Funny enough, I got one off stream on an orange ID. It'd be nice to see the Viridian V101. chat all the time in the world to get all this stuff near me. Since I'm far enough forward, I can take care of the other side. Kind of works out nicely. So I'm glad we saw some alternate drops at least. We saw, for example, Red Sword. We saw some Vices when we played before. So we got a primary though. Uh, that is what we call a reset. <laughs> like, wave your finger. Mm -mm. Not going that way with three players. Maybe with four, but I'll need that. still always forget to remember what that message looks like. There, there's like some long capital text. 
in the quest description. I just always forget to read it. Just out of habit, I skip it. So unfortunately, there wasn't too much to test our item reader on. We did open up the settings later, though, in a different portion of the quest. So at least we got to see the Dropbox statuses. Oh, that's actually kind of annoying. I'm gonna confuse trap this. If they want to fight me, they can. Definitely don't need that. It's kind of funny watching the dragon assist me to kill the lily. Even the dragons had enough of Lily. Plonk. The red sword from you. Oh. Alright. If it if we get that one more time, we're switching quests. <laughs> Just, it's so unfortunate. Don't want to see that door open. I wish there was a way to manipulate it. If you could unrandomize that first door, I'm telling you, this quest would be like the best quest of all time. But if that other door opens, the sadness ensues. Like, can you imagine if it was like time based on how long it takes to kill grass assassins? You just have like a literal clock up as you enter that room. Like, hold on. We're, we gotta kill them on an e oh, kill them on an even second. We'll time it. <laughs> freeze trap here. Put a freeze trap here. Walk over here. There we go. Decent crowd control. So at least with the resets, we're still getting like V101. If oh oh, that was a tease. Did you oh chat? That was rude. <laughs> <laughs> that was rude. Oh, come on. Grass Assassin gave me the PD. That's rude. Mm, 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 mm. Disappointed in you, game. <laughs> Take your head, chat. The Grass Assassin could have given us V101. Instead, PD. Disappointment. Kill there. Damn, the gear soul came out. Now it's serious business. Alright, it's a sign chat. <laughs> it, just, it just it really wants to go to mines. We're like, oh what a shame. Alright, what quest do we do now? It is still not even beat. Hmm. I think. I guess we could do. A Neville Surge with three people is really awkward. You need four. You either need two or four. Three is a very awkward number because somebody would have to solo in multiplayer, which feels terrible. Um. Oh, oh, oh. To be something else we could do. Just thinking. I guess we could do while we wait, we could switch over and do red ID TTF before it becomes even beat. So we'll actually not end the stream with TTF. We'll end the stream with probably another yellow ID run in episode four. My poor blue ID hunter who I've not used since I hit 180. I was like, man, it wasn't as life changing as I was hoping. Like, it was good, don't get me wrong, to get Red Ring on that character, but man, did not feel as impactful as like the Hugh cast getting Red Ring or Raw cast. Yeah, do a couple TTFs. 
take advantage of rare enemy. I'm gonna have all the traps needed to test it. Oh, look at that adept. Disgusting. Listen, chat, sometimes I just want resistances. Eventually I'll be able to undo that centurion ability. That'd be so nice. I'm assuming it's just us for TTF. I haven't seen anybody in the chat mention they wanted to hop in. Yeah, I'll be able to do. So I'll basically just be mostly full clearing the class, I guess. I'll be using as many confused traps as I can here. I just want the normal enemies. I don't think these matter. I just want to open the boxes. There we go. Yeah, I think it's just specifically the Bartles that get what we need, if I remember correctly. We don't have to do the Tallow Clears, since it's not an, an anniversary event, from what I recall. But I guess I could double check while we're here. Which has the thing that I'm looking for. Yeah, it's just the Bartles that have Diska. Unless I really want Red Saber. I, I don't think making the run take longer for Red Saber is worth it. It makes sense in Anniversary when those could be PDs or badges or even Easter event, for example. Or arguably Christmas event, too. But other than that, I'm like... Mm. getting skill dipped all over the place today, chat. Rip. actually guessed pretty well. You know what? For a blind camera, I will absolutely take that. There, there, there was no visual chat. I just felt in my heart where it was. I was very close. I will absolutely take that. Okay, it's slime duping time. Okay. One, two, three. Freeze trap. Back up. Disco. Ooh, did I make some of them untargetable? Lucky. Normally, Jessica bounces between all of them, but it was only bouncing between two for some reason. We'll put a courtesy freeze trap here in case somebody wants to clear. I don't want to clear. I have to go to the slime room. I'll put it there. Wait, did the soundtrack end with the sleeping music? That's kind of funny, actually. Ooh, that was almost super bad. I was about to change soundtrack, so that it was like something spawned in front of me. Hold on, I gotta pay attention. One, two, three. Slime dupe in time. Let's see any rare slimes. Oh, no rare slimes. Oh, well, we tried. I'm gonna move the group slightly closer to the door so I don't make the team wait as long, and then we'll switch the soundtrack. I think it's just dropped for me there, sadly. this into I don't know what this game is Tech me night huh? I I'm gonna look that up later I'll put on some race music from the same game <laughs> the game series of the the Wagner Midnight or whatever it is. I'm guessing Protect Me Night is a series, because it was directing me to NES, which did not look correct. 
But anyway, we'll play up to the fourth game in the series. Some of the remixes may not be accurate to when they were released, but we'll at least play them in chronological order of the game. Like one and then two and then three and then four kind of thing. I'm gonna stay behind and basically kill all the robots just to check for a heart of skin. Once I confuse trap, it shouldn't be too bad. I'll assist the team here by at least shooting the Sinnoh Red. And I'm gonna be playing cleanup duty. So we're gonna put down a happy little freeze trap here. down here. In which case, if I'm solo, it just makes more sense to do this. Wow, he really fell backwards on the first shot. It was both lucky and unlucky simultaneously. Wait, what is happening? What? Wait, what did he get? What did he get hit by? Did you see that, Chad? He just flinched at nothing. I swear he didn't take damage there. He wasn't fighting anything. He just fell over shenanigans. Anyway. Team is gonna go on and clear the Sinnoh. Well, I'll probably kill the Sinnohs to some extent. But they're gonna go ahead and deal with the Barans. I'm gonna at least do a happy little confused trap circle. Yeah, I'm good. Goodbye, Sinnoh Blues. I got a, I got a room to assist. Ouch. I'm doing a doing a skin check real quick. Take that dumb eight though. No skin check from them. Unfortunate. Open the way. I might as well kill these. Nothing of interest there. We'll go back to Twin Blaze. So sadly, no heart of item from the Gil Chicks there. Yeah, it took a little longer on the robot room, so I, I did leave them a bit more awkwardly with Varans. That's definitely my bad. I'll try to clear it faster next time. Slow down the room a little bit with this. Unfortunately, with this Twin Blaze, it has a little bit of machine, so my damage is actually pretty good here. Yeah, I'm at 1301 ATP. That's like, yeah, 2563 total ATP is pretty good. Take that for sure. Nope, no lyrics. No, no lyrics. Ooh. Kind of a weird angle in the boss. Corrected it eventually. Uh oh. Parameter drops. Ripping parameter. Uh. possible to do with just two characters? Maybe. I'm gonna say challenge mode accepted. At least there's a shifter, so it could be worse. I'm definitely gonna confuse drop this. 
I want to kill all the Arlens. Don't let them fight each other. I was originally going to do this. Put a free strap here, put a free strap here. I swear I did it more to the side in which I just got attacked, but whatever. I guess I s triggered it too early or something. Okay, so we've now done all the checks for Disco Brave Man. Yeah, sorry your PC keeps crashing in Parameter. It's really unfortunate with PSO. Is it only PSO that it crashes? Or just other games? On the plus side, at least I should have Milo Eula if I really need to use it. Just crashes randomly. Ooh. actually didn't steal my gun. I'm kind of surprised by that. We'll take it. Damn, no spread needle from them. Unfortunate. Yeah, I'm pretty close to getting my Lula, so if we're really desperate, we can pop it. Should be able to tank most things. Unfortunately, I'm like literally one level up shy of surviving the double blast from falls. Like, we're not that far off from levels, at least. Yeah, I don't really want to go for dark blow strats with just two people. That, that scares me too much. Three players? That's whatever. There we go. I got Mag Blast the hard way. I think there's a bit of ability abuse, though. Oh. I targeted the right one. I mean, maybe I go for... Hmm. I mean, I should still probably vice here. Oh, I got behind the boss by accident. On, gotta go with what we can aim at. Unfortunate. We're about to lose our buffs, but how much can really be done about that? Goodbye buffs. Sometimes missing the normals. Maybe it's just a quirk of the bots moving. Unfortunate. Nice shot. I have a feeling I'm probably just gonna get double hit by the boss at some point, but not much we can do about that. I mean, I, gu I guess I could try to absorb it with my Leula. I might actually do that. If the boss targets me, I'm mildly yuling. Because otherwise I think I'm going to die to the double hit. They should be able to time it in such a way that it will protect me. Get red ring, something like that. Oh, it's targeting poor health leave.
damage. Apparently it's only targeting Hellcleave. Poor Hellcleave. Boss has a vendetta. Yeah, this is where standing, instead of getting grants there, would make a big difference, because it could have gotten attacks out. Okay, I accept my death. Goodbye, me. If I say nearish to Hellcleave, I'll take advantage of his Resta without necessarily getting him hit by anything. Hellcleave will survive this as long as he heals. Oh, gotta tap it out there. It sucks. Punished. I got Mag Invincibility. There we go. Got through it eventually. I'm a guru. I'm a ghost, that's the chat. I said Runner Remix 2010. Arius clear. Sadly, no item draw. Okay, if it's just like one or two lines and not like an actual song, let it play. There we go. I guess if Hellcleave is up to it, we could do an episode 4 run. It is even beat again. Let's see. Everything in there is fun. Body blocked by him so hard. Low lone antidote. You know, I managed to actually still keep my money mostly positive despite using Jaya. Yeah, it'll it'll be the last run, I think. That run usually takes like 20 minutes. Let's go back to C-Bang. Hicks, I didn't think about that. Let's see if we could get Rare Dwarf on while Rare Enemy Week is in effect. The mouse seems to like sliding back onto the PSO screen. Apologies for that. I'm technically looking at two different windows, but sometimes it'll drift when I put the mouse back. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hopefully we'll end up getting a Cannon Rouge or something. That is the dream, chat, that one day we will do this. And that Dorfana Claire will finally spawn. <laughs> we'll finally get a chance at the item. All I've learned is eventually I need more limiters. If I want to put one per character. Perfect mayhem! <laughs> I'm apparently being raided. Welcome, Koi Sheffy. Hope you're doing well. Apparently lots of barks. Hopefully whatever you're doing today was a lot of fun. Good 
Just playing some PSO, going through Yuzo Kosuhiro soundtracks. How am I doing? I'm feeling a little tired. Still kind of recovering from sickness. And we're just testing some stuff out in PSO. But if you want to talk about anything, we are more than welcome to bring up any topic you like. As long as it's PG-13-ish. I'm willing to slide a little bit on some topics, but others, like, not stream appropriate. But hopefully art has been going well for you. Your week has been slowly improving. Yeah, it's just like, I started feeling better and then I felt worse again. It's just kind of unfortunate. I did do a really big speech on Wednesday, so it was like taking all my mental energy to prepare for that. It was very long. I think that was possibly the longest speech I've ever given. It took 40 minutes to get through, to give you an idea. That was a long time to go through on something that's scripted. So it's just like my brain is still recovering from that. But otherwise, it's, it's been okay. Yeah, that is a long time. I was like, I don't even remember doing anything like that in college. I was like, wow. I thought giving like a, you know, 10 minutes of your time, your team has X number of minutes was rough without using notes. But that, nope, that was 40 minutes with no notes. It was super long. But it's over. I don't have to do that again at least. Poor Buddhas. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, team was also wearing me out when I came back from being sick, which I think also drove me to being sick again. As I said before, there was like a period where I was like almost recovered and then it got worse. Out of your ass, Starks. You are so smart. It's just one of those things, it just, ugh, brutal. Yeah, sometimes I get asked to do things because I'm an alumni. But if my work asks me to do it because I'm an alumni, I'm like, uh... I don't know about that sometimes. It leads to those kinds of scenarios. guy says, what do we do in PSO? Oh, we're just murdering. Just casual murder. It's with PSO. It's the murder simulator. We're trying not to get stomped by Dwarf on, but, uh... Just... Oh, there we go. Hopefully you've spared me, at least. Hopefully you're doing well, Poro. I don't know if you caught some of the shenanigans of your character the other day. This is the first time you see me play PSO? Hmm. Well, you'll see this a lot more towards the holidays. Wildlife Extinction Simulator? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you have questions, you want to talk about other games, recommendations... Eventually, we'll figure out what we're gonna do after Cult of the Lamb, so if there's stuff that the chat wants to see, just let me know. I mean, this is the perfect time to talk. I can look at chat while playing the game. If you're doing alright, you're not gonna see what happened in the Cult of the Lamb, what was going on. Um... Your character ended up, I think, fighting the final boss of the game. I think that is true. The vengeance was had from you. Throw these guys down a little more. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm sure I didn't aid the boss. I'm trying to think if your character did anything else. You you were mo lo more low-key in the la last section. We had shenanigans, like we brought people back to life and they kept killing our party. Which did make me very sad, I will see. Well, we crashed the game twice. Which reminds me, I gotta go back and clip that. I want, I want that to be immortalized. We crashed not once, but twice. That was actually impressive. We're too good, chat. 
I know. <laughs> to be fair, one of those crashes was like a mercy kill, because I was like, man, I can't imagine completing this run with this build. And then the game crashed, and I'm like, doesn't count as a loss. <laughs> listen, listen, if if the game gives me some weird little pop-up and just boots out, doesn't count. I mean, it would have taken me like five eternities in order to kill the... Uh, the area boss with that build, but we'll take it, I guess. Yeah. Although, I think <laughs> I think Poro would like uh, towards the end of the session, we did unlock more of the sin things. So we can have the, the ritual of lust, I think it was called. I'm sure that'll be interesting when we use it next session. It was a very Poro and Ping thing, for sure. Are there good games with Twitch integration? Um... Excuse me. I mean, generally speaking, if it was specifically through the Crowd Control app, I know they have a list of all the games that are there. There's some I would consider playing from that list. Others are kind of... Mm, like, I like the game, but the Crowd Control is not that great. Otherwise, I'm just... I'm just trying to think of, like, things I've seen on other streams. Like, I, I know... Sometimes they do like marbles or whatever. That's probably the most common game I've seen when there's integration. But I do like ones where it's more like chat makes decisions on stuff. So I'd like to some extent like Cult of the Lamb has its own voting system, for example. Oh, there's the other one. But offhand, I don't know. I can't think of, like, too, too many. We normally just play some multiplayer games together, like PSO. Although, funny enough, I was playing Yakuza the other day, uh, like a dragon. And I was surprised how much interaction I could potentially have with the chat on that game. Not gonna lie, but... Because it was more RPG-based, there was actually just a ton of choices to make. Yeah, Vampire Survivors is a is a thing that could happen. Ooh, nice level up. Yeah, but it's just like offhand, like I think of like a lot of classic games where it's more trolling the player, which there's nothing wrong with it. But it's not quite the same as some of the other interaction games, sadly. Oh, the shame no dwarf on a clear. Yeah, I'm not surprised there's crowd control for that. I know that we tried it for at one point, I think, like, Slay the Spire. It was okay. Like, something I was, like, dying to go back into with crowd control. Black Pound Crace, no slots. No thanks. Yeah, it's kind of like a difference where... You know, we, we do things like the Castlevania mod that I made a long a long time ago at this point with the help of another developer. Uh, uh where you could do help or hinder kind of things, but most of the other ones are just like 90% of the time it's just gonna be kill player. Like there's there's like a difference in the nuance. I don't like the ones where it just straight up is just like kill player. I don't find those very fun to play or watch. But if it's, like, challenges, like, you do stuff to my controls, or, like, you flip stuff, or other things of that nature, you remove certain items temporarily, or you ban certain abilities, I find that more interesting. Especially if it's, because most of the games tend to be on the easier side of things, so it's like, okay, we'll take the challenge. But the problem is that even for like really popular games, like I'll just take an easy example, like Ocarina of Time, there is just a lot of crowd control options that just break the game. Where if if you leave everything, even on a small cooldown, it's possible to still softlock the the player forever. 
due to like how janky some of those games are. Like for example, whenever you're in a treasure room and you spawn an extra enemy, it breaks the treasure room. So it's never going to spawn what it needs if it counts how many enemies are killed. Things of that nature. Just like r really basic things that will happen very often. And losing a run to that kind of stuff is just kind of kind of not for me. Maybe for some people it is, but I'm like, hmm. I'd rather chat spawn in extra things to fight, which is funny. Than just like straight up make the game unwinnable. Do you know what I mean? There has to be like some semblance of balance for it. And that's why I had problems with like Castlevania Symphony of the Night as well. Because they very blindly just let you run effects wherever. But there's a lot of times where if you run those effects in certain rooms, the game will crash. So like, it needs to be like a little smarter about implementing it. It's not that I don't like the effects, it's just that if it doesn't go like the extra step to ensure stability of the game, it's like, hmm, it's not a great feeling. People like that know the game are good enough that they can overcome anything, but that's the problem. With those, you can't. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, e you could even the world's best player if you do that in a certain room, they're done. There's there's no counterplay. It's over. You killed the run. It's like, for example, if you spawn our wings in certain rooms in Ocarina of Time, the game will crash. Or you can make the game more or less unplayable if you do that in, like, Ganondorf's Tower. Where they, the player literally just has no ability to stand still and make an attack that they need. Things of that nature. So it's very easy to just softlock the player. Sometimes it will resolve itself if the command is on cooldown, but a lot of times it doesn't, sadly. Could just glitch and win? Uh, to some extent. There's sometimes you have to actually beat it to advance. And unfortunately, there are a lot of rooms that you you do that, it's over. And also, those usually involve complex setups, which if you reverse controls or slippery floor them, or spawn an enemy or damage them, you can just interrupt the, set the setup indefinitely. That's what I'm talking about. Like, there's, there's just a lot of ways you... It, it, it's fair in some ways. You could stop them from doing, like, game-breaking stuff. But then, like, you break their game with no effort, and there's no recovery. It'd be, like, interesting if there was, like, a skillful recovery. Don't get me wrong, but it's just one of those natures of the thing that if it doesn't smartly detect where certain things should be used, it'll just break the experience. Get rid of these guys. I was gonna say, I'll do the hot take. I never liked Ocarina of Time. I <laughs> can be real with you. It's... It was okay when I played it. I played Subnautica. No. I don't usually do a lot of the first-person exploration stuff. I think there are some good Zelda games, and I understand why people like it, but, like, who the base version of that game did, is just terrible. I think the 3DS version fixed some of the issues that game had. But it was it was a very rough experience, I'm not gonna lie. There's just like a lot of UI annoyance, and obviously Navi. I really don't like Navi. That was so sad. I debuffed the enemy, it just immediately got slapped. I tried. Oh. Oh, I got comboed. The wombo combo was real. Couldn't do anything there. Unfortunately, I was on my slower weapon. And I already debuffed the enemy, so not much I could do there. You think I'm bothered by horror games? I'm not bothered by horror games. I feel like people would watch it and they'd want me to be, like, really reactive. I would just be like... Oh, is it an Eldritch Horror? Okay. <laughs> I'd just be like, I'd be very, the word would be nonplus. I would not really have a reaction to it. <laughs> this 
<laughs> like, okay. I'm like, listen. I I witness what happens in the real world. This horror, tame. I don't care. <laughs> I'm like, the real horror is turning on the news sometimes, Chad. I'm telling you. I'm like, go ahead. Eldritch Abomination, you know what? You're more reasonable. <laughs> Only one way to find out. I mean, I think I've played some horror games on stream before. I just don't usually go for the bigger ones. Like, for example, I might consider the Silent Hill remake if they get rid of tank controls, because I was never a fan of tank controls. I know it, like, gives you a certain experience and they could give you the fixed camera angles, yada yada yada, but I just don't like controlling the character. So if the game doesn't feel fun to play, I'm not gonna play it. I'm really not bothered by that at all, Poro. My, my tolerance level for that is insane. I'm just like, no. I'm just like, I just like end it sounds. You'll you'll maybe get me to jump a little at jump scares, but that that's their point. They're just loud sounds. I'm like, mmm. No no no. You gotta you gotta work to earn it. Laser got some S parts, nice. Nah, I don't care about that at all. Jump out of silence, yeah. Thank you, Blue Donna. <laughs> Blue Donna with the with the inside as usual. Yeah, I just don't care. I just kind of one of those things. Like I don't find zombies scary. I find them more gross. That's why I don't like zombie games. Like people being torn apart is on the list of things I don't really want to watch. It makes me uncomfortable. It's not that it's scary. I just find it gross. Physically, I don't really want to watch that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Get another Gapoe stack out here. Also, I realized that I clicked the wrong one. That sucks. Yeah, it's like I don't I don't know how to convey the level of horror I've watched. I mean, I watched Junji Ito and it doesn't affect me. Does that count? Or I've read it? I don't I don't know how to put it in like horror terms. Also, too many lyrics. I gotta skip this song. Have I seen Midsummer? I don't know what you mean by that. When you say that, I only think of Midsummer Murders. It's a mystery series. I don't know what Midsummer is by itself. I think a rage game would also be hilarious. I would not be able to survive. I think there's a difference between like somebody being split open and then watching somebody be eaten slowly, or like the constant screaming really bothers me. I don't like that. If it's just somebody, like, exploding in a bloodbath, I don't really care about that stuff. I play PsyOps. Some of these trimates for sure. The horror movie. No, I'm not familiar with that. Like, I don't watch, like, a ton of ton of horror stuff, but... Oh, hey! Rare boss. But from that standpoint, it's kind of like, mm, I don't know. I mean, I've watched movies that I don't know if I can, because that's the thing, I don't think there's, I, I don't consider them scary, but maybe some people would. I don't know. Like, I think it's called Let the Right One In with the vampires. Specifically a vampire girl. Oh, I got bodied. of these. Yeah, I'm hoping for the Daylight Scar from the boss. We'll see, though. Okay, I got the red. <laughs> I was gonna say, a long time ago, I did perform in a Midnight Sun. Um, 
Midsummer Night's Dream. There we go. I didn't play an important role in it, but I was I was in it. <laughs> I will say that. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we're definitely going to eat some dive fluids as we go through. No, as I said before, I don't usually go out of my way to watch a lot of horror stuff. It just doesn't do anything for me. It's just... I like psychological horror. Why did I get one shot? Hello? Game, please. <laughs> you all witnessed that. I died at full health. Shenanigans happened. It should not one shot me ever. Shenanigans. Yeah, when the laser is the least damaging thing in the boss for some reason. Oh, I thought Hellcube was gonna shoot again, to be honest. That was unfortunate. Hmm. I could identify which one is the low health one. I might be able to grant it. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll give an example. I don't... Like, I've seen the Saw movies. I've sat through the Saw movies. I don't know if I would consider... I guess Scream is, like, technically a horror movie. Again, like, there's one... I just... I don't know. I'm not scared by them. So it's, like, it's hard for me to quantify what is. And some of them feel more like parodies, even though they are horror movies. So it's, like, it's hard for me to name, like, what I would consider quintessential horror. Like, they are horror films, but they're not scary. Does that make sense? Like, there's elements in them where they would be it, but I don't know if that would be the same thing. I prefer more psychological horror. I find that more interesting, but again, I don't find it scary. <laughs> I was like, to some extent, we are living in that dystopian universe in which they describe. Oh, no hit percentage on it, that's a shame. But congrats on a Daylight Scar, I guess. Yeah, if you just go up to me and go, boo, like, I'm not gonna jump. I'm gonna be like, what are you doing? <laughs> just like, I'm just like, N, what? Where are you going with it? No. No, I'm more subdued with it. I, I don't have a strong reaction to it. I wish I had someone to watch horror movies with. Oh no. Yeah, is this up before? My my only real line is zombie movies. I just don't like them. I think the closest I came to liking them was uh oh, now I feel embarrassed. I should this is the classic horror movie. Why do I not remember its name? Black and white Zombie movie. Is it Night of the Living Dead? I forget. it's part of a longer series. But anyway, it involves the person looking out the door and getting shot. I'll put it that way. That was like one of the few ones that I liked. Leak Boy Sheffy, oh no. But congrats on the Daylight Scar. Um... I'm willing to do another run, I guess. We're, we're having a conversation, at least. Or if Hellcleave wants to do something else for TTF, let me know. But I'm thinking from the standpoint of the chat, at least there's a conversation going, so I will continue. No worries, I'll cleave. I'll do a solo quest then. Not a big deal. Or Koisheppi. Hmm, let me think. I want to do oh I know what I can do okay I got 30 in the bank let's go do it let, let, let's roll some dice what else was I thinking of playing 
Um, honestly, I don't have a lot of... I don't have a lot of things in mind for multiplayer at the moment. I would have to think a bit more. Please slash lobby out of here. Don't want to be bullied. Don't be so bullyable. You got enough pets on your stream. I'm not sure who that's in reference to. Anyway, let's go ahead and go through here. Let's do a quick little, little pickup. Maybe I'll get the item I'm looking for. Let's do like three crystal runs. Mario Party? Oh, no way. That The only game you could name that would be worse than Mario Party is Dokapon Kingdom. Oh, he's a pet redeem. Okay, that makes more sense. Mar Mario Party is one of the hell no's in my category. Never would I ever play that with people ever again. Yeah, Dokapon Kingdom is like an actual nightmare. <laughs> That, that game is designed by cruel and vengeful developers. Holy. Nah, Mario Party is just all RNG. I really don't like most of the games in it. There's like a few that are genuinely skill-based, but man oh man, or a majority of them just... Pick the thing that won't blow you up. I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't really like that kind of stuff in games. Uh, this one. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't want to go back to the lobby. Welcome, Edward Nego. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I just... I don't really want to do competitive games. I, I'm kind of over those in general. Wait, what? Oh, I must have hit... There's not enough room in my pack? What? What? What do you mean? What do you- What? What is he talking about? There's not enough room in my pack? How many items do I need? I'm so lost. What? I don't remember this being a requirement. I'll go put some stuff away, I guess. One second, chat. His tomfoolery threw me off. Let me put these away, I guess. I know, I'm like, what do you mean the items in my pack? I have <laughs> five photon special. crystals. What else do you want with this quest? I really don't ever remember it restricting you based off of items, but I guess I always had less. Weird. Uh, no more questions. So we'll do a couple of these. Maybe I'll get the gun I'm looking for. Was that between games I was considering? Not at the moment. I Like, I thought about if I wanted to do more Cynthia of the Night mod, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling it, honestly. I really want to force myself to play something I'm not interested in. But I was curious in general if there were more, like... It doesn't have to necessarily be, like, Twitch interactions, but general, like, co-op games. Like, I know, for example, we did, uh... I was gonna say The Last of Us, that's not the correct game name. But we basically did a game where there's two people and they're trying to solve puzzles and they go through. There's, like, a couple games like that. I thought about if I wanted to do more of those to interact with Twitch chat a bit more. But even if it's just something like a general narrative, where there's a lot of decisions to make, it could be interesting. As I said before, I ended up playing uh, a quiz game, which was kind of fun in Like a Dragon, where I had people on voice call, and we are desperately trying to remember very, sometimes very straightforward trivia, and then other times incredibly obtuse trivia. <laughs> like, this is so specific to Japan. I'm gonna think about this. Oh, I didn't get what I needed. Damn. Well, I can see the disappointment through the wall. Until dawn. Oh, no, what that. Oh, is that another horror? Oh. Yeah, that's another horror game. I don't know. 
maybe. But like, is it interactive in the sense that chat is interacting, or are you just trying to get me to play a horror game? <laughs> just return to the city. I don't remember that having any Twitch integration. Yeah, no, I'm familiar with the premise of the game, but you, we were talking about having chat involved. I don't... Are, I mean, I guess if the decisions aren't timed, I guess... Maybe that would make more sense. Because there's going to be a big... Oh, I didn't mean to go to ultimate. That was a mistake. Because I, I would say from the standpoint of Twitch, there's going to be like a 15 plus second delay. So anything that's like, you have 10 seconds to decide, hold left or right, like... Twitch chat is not going to be able to react to that. You play a horror game while screaming to oblivion. Oh no. Yeah, is this it before? I'm not bothered by them, but it's like, it also has to fit the format. Oh, oops. I did it, not single player. One day I'll make this game correctly. A way out, thank you. That was the game I was trying to think of earlier. I was gonna say, could you imagine, Chad, if in the next PSO update they let you auto remember your game settings so you don't have to keep doing this every time? That that would be the true next level update. So I don't have to constantly menu the same thing over and over. Yeah, but I'm because that's what I'm talking about. There's there's always gonna be people that spoil stuff, so it's kinda uh it has to be something that they take advantage of, like... I'm just trying to think of games where narrative... Oh, like a Dragon keeps coming up because I was just thinking of it. Wait, is he blocking me from joining again? Why does he need so many item spaces free? I don't understand, chat. I have four item spots free. Why does he need five? This quest only drops one item. I'm so confused. Afinia, please. Please remove this requirement. This is such nonsense. I really don't want to have to come back here every single time. This away. He's away. Ridiculous. Raw, indeed. Yeah, but it's like, as I said before, I, I don't know if that's also the right audience. I mean, I'm assuming there's some overlap with what we play and potentially some horror games. But if we start going like hard into horror, I don't think a lot of people here watch it in general. That's why I was more thinking, you know, co-op games or they decide narrative. Because we do play RPGs, don't get me wrong. So it's interesting when chat can decide, you know, some ending choices. Chat's finally had enough of certain characters in our playthrough and just want to tell them off. For example, Get rid of these. <laughs> I don't have to hit him again, but I did just send a message. Yeah, I generally don't watch, like, a lot of Twitch streams. Like, I, I will support other streams, but, like, content-wise, I don't know. It's just not normally what I watch, so it's harder for me to think of, like, interactive games unless I happen to see somebody doing a special event offhand. Oh, no, oh not Octopath. That game was disappointed me. Hopefully two is at least a little better than one. Always remember my experience in... I got a Yun Chang. I guess that's okay. I still not the weapon I'm looking for, but we'll, we'll try a couple more times. Yeah, always remember... Octopath 1 is the game where I got all the way to the end of the game and I got to the final phase of the final boss and my HP was slightly too low, and I got one shot. And that required me to not only potentially level, 
but to go through and play every single one of those other bosses again, just to try again at the final boss. And I was like, you know what? I don't think I want the true ending that badly. I'll be real with you. <laughs> I didn't grind basically the entire game, and I'm like, you just made their damage too high. I'm kind of not interested. There we go. I managed to pass his arbitrary number of item check. Yeah. Like, sadly, the only game that was also coming to mind, but I don't like the story, is um, Tales of Zillia 2, where technically there's a lot of choices chat can make. It's just the story itself is, like, paper thin. That game is interesting to dissect from a plot standpoint. I might play it just so Chad will understand that I like Tales games, but that game is a train wreck. Almost literally and figuratively, there is a train that you destroy at one point in the story. Thing says choice in the game can make or break the experience, exactly. If I played Xenoblades, I have none. It's just kind of like one of those things where it's like, uh, it's, it's a little, that's special, that story's a little special. You can summarize it as, you need to pay to win to advance the plot, and you're very super special awesome, so you become bestest friends with all the characters from all the previous games, and you can solve every conflict better than them, and they all support you to help you with your problems. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty accurate summary of that game, to be honest. So that, that story is kind of a train wreck, start to finish. Special is on cooldown, damn. Damn indeed. So there, there's some where, like, when you have the narrative choice, unfortunately the games themselves are not very strong. Which game are you referring, referring to, Koishepi, that you played a lot of? Xenoblade? Man, I keep getting Magatama. I don't want the Magatama. Oh, chat. Unlucky. I have a 2 out of 9 chance of getting the item that I want. I will take either Last Swan or Master Raven. I actually don't care which one I get. I do need both. So unfortunate. We'll do a couple more runs while talking with Chad. Interesting to see how you feel about Xenoblade. See, the problem is I think I played Xeno Gears, and that game turned me off of like the entirety of it. I think I talked about it on stream a couple times. That opening cutscene was so long that when I realized I didn't have room on my memory card to save the game, and I'd played for like an hour at that point, and I had to redo the beginning of the game, I actually got back to where I was in two minutes because almost 55 minutes of that was cutscene. Like, actually crazy. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Man, I don't know. I don't really want to go further than that. It's like, that, that's, a, that's a long commitment for me. I mean, it has to be, like, truly exceptional. Like, there, there are some very rare games that would ever qualify in that category that would justify sitting through that again. Dust and Elysian Kill. You know what? I remember that game having a lot of development issues. I have, I never got a chance to play it, though, because of what console it was released on. I don't even remember what type of genre that game is. I just remember that it come up a while ago. Wasn't it like a single person's passion project? got a remake on the switch oh i don't i don't play with the switch i have to see if it even works that system went very unloved for me Get rid of these things real quick i might recheck dust i don't mind i actually do like action rpgs i'm assuming it is but again i, I would have to look up content generally what it's about. Get rid of these enemies real quick. You know what? I'll take a smart link. I actually do need those. 
It's not the best reward, but it is a reward that I actually need, because I'm gonna need it for a few casts at some point. I would have rather spent a PD for it than use a Photon Crystal, but we're already here. Will you just let me teleport? Thank you. It's a very light action RPG, interesting. Oh, you mean Xenoblade. Uh, we'll see. I'm gonna be real with you. My standards for turn-based games are really high. So if there, if it's a if it's a turn-based game, it better be ultra polished at this point. We have played a lot of good ones on stream, and we've also played some truly terrible ones. <laughs> there, we we've played the gambit, <laughs> as it were. More turn more turn-based than it is action-based. Yeah. It's kind of one of those things where, like, I grew up playing a lot of really basic RPGs. So I got burned out on them by the time I got to high school. Because I just got to the point where I was like, I'll play something like Etrian Odyssey, and it goes so far and above what games like Final Fantasy were doing at the time that I was like, why would I ever go back to play these other games? <laughs> Just like honest statement. I was like, wow, I feel more actively involved in like a mental state with the game. I'm not just like brain dead hitting fight over and over. I'm like, mmm. It's, it's gotta have that little extra oomph to it. That's why I was surprised. I was thinking I wouldn't end up liking Chrono Trigger because the game is, you know, it's very iconic, but it's also extremely old. To the point where it's like, oh, you know, we're so used to like modern RPG things to like advance cutscenes or just like fast travel and stuff like that. And I'm like, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. And then like I played it and I'm like, man, this is so much better than some stuff that was even released on PS2. We went backwards for some reason from that game. No, it's not a. Uh, it's not an action RPG. It's just an RPG. It's turn based. Yeah, like a train Odyssey, like genuinely makes me think almost every fight, and boss fights in particular. Like I'm actually planning it out as we go through, trying to remember like what attacks they're doing and how often they do them. So like they're, I I am so much more actively engaged with those bosses, and they have elements of RNG. But it doesn't feel unfair for the most part. So it's like if they have this Omega attack that is gonna like wipe all my buffs away, I'll know that they can't use it twice in a row, generally speaking. So at least I can strategize around it. Where like when they go pure RNG, I don't know. That that's where you start getting things like wild arms, where it's just like you you just kind of make a face at the game at that point. It's like, it's not really fun to not be able to strategize on bosses. There's no 7th moon, that's very true. Yeah, like, the, the caliber of the games that I've played over the years has told me, like, there is a minimum level the games have to beat at this point. Unless the whole point is to dunk on the game, you know, that's, that's separate. Then that category is low. Like we, for for every Tales of Viseria we play, we play Tales of Zestaria. So it's like we're we're willing to play bad games, but we have to go in with the mindset. So we have no hope for it to be <laughs> at, at any point close to the tier of something else we played on stream. Fine, I'll do one more crystal. Then I'm gonna save the rest for now. Begin regeneration. Oh no. Yeah, you like my swat swad reading my wazd movement into the game. Yeah, it's just kind of like one of those things where there there are some very clever boss designs that are used. I think, for example, Final Fantasy VI has a lot of interesting boss designs. They're not like the most complicated, but those two, if you're playing on like a low level challenge, you know, have some patterns. They have like percent health. They try to detect certain conditions. It feels like they're more reactive to what you're doing 
And sometimes that can lead to exploits, don't get me wrong. But it's like, I at least want to see those. I don't really want to see, like, Joe Generic boss number 82 with my AoE spell and my single target spell. And that's all I got. We, we could do better as gamers. We have so many more choices. You should play a Pokemon game. Uh, if by strategy you mean level 1 Pokemon, sure. I'm assuming it's sarcasm for sure. Yeah, I was I was not into Pokemon either. I like the idea of collecting them at first, and then I was like, huh. Kind of tedious. <laughs> that was Kid Me, by the way. That's not adult me. Kid Me was, like, kind of over it. I was like, man, and then I gotta get a trade link out. I'm like, uh... And I gotta try to import between two different copies because I wanted a Gengar. I'm like, do I really have to keep doing this? I don't know. Question mark. And then I'll play and I'm like, wow, some like some Pokemon in the Safari Zone are like better than every other monster in the game. I just don't understand. I'm like, why is Taros and Chansey so overpowered? out of here too. Yeah, like I had like an Alakazam, Tauros, Chansey. I didn't even bother using other characters. They couldn't even kill them. <laughs> I was like, I have a Storlax too, I guess, who's also a borderline unkillable. So it's like, whatever. So unfortunate, chat. We did not get the item I was looking for. You have to actively limit yourself to make Pokemon challenging. That's why they do do the Nuzlocke and things like that. It is a little too easy. That's not true. The challenge is to get to the end. Is it a challenge, though? Is it? I will admit, like, you go to the end. <laughs> That's the big, like, ch biggest challenge of all. I, <laughs> if you mean from, like, a willpower standpoint, maybe. As I said before, I... I don't hold sentimental value on the characters. I'm just kind of like, oh, this character is just genuinely terrible. I will want to swap them out with something else of a similar type. I, I don't get attached to them. I'm just kind of like, hmm. The chance of you putting down the game before we reach out is incredibly high. I did play it before because I wanted to at least play with other people with the game, but yeah. After that, I think I got like red, blue, yellow all around. Yeah, they were like within a year of each other. And then I realized I'm not into that, sadly. Let me think. There's one more. I guess we could continue our conversation. I guess. Let's not do this character. Let's do this character. Yeah, I mean, like, I understand why people like it, but like. I'm not one that is swayed over by designs. I care about mechanics. Like, you will get me so much more interested in, like, a Rune Factory than you will, like, a whole bunch of other games, for sure. That game series, I think, will return to at the beginning of next year. Technically, there are choices in that game. There's not, like, a ton, a ton of them, but there are some choices. Also, are we still in the fourth game? Oh yeah, there's like a million songs in the fourth game. Lobby. What other games are there? It's like, that's more open for chat for what they want to see. Oh, that's right, I don't need to do that. Person ultimate, but remove the anguish level. I mean, I could clear it on anguish, but I do actually want to clear mines. Sort our inventory real quick. Need my items. What is my character wearing? Uh, a bow. And the outfit is called special. It's PSO, faux new mins and new worlds, dressed like clowns. This is more normal, to be honest to some of the other characters. 
Oh, did I, I left the adepts on the other character. I'm so annoyed at myself. But I get for not paying attention. Uh, I gotta get the items before I do this run. <laughs> this one is special. Annoying. This is why I need more of these items, chat. When I'm floating accessories between characters, I'm thinking I want to switch characters, but I don't think about what items I took for them. So unfortunate. Anyway, we're going to put the Adepts back, because I need them. Because that reduced our magic cost, so that I'm not constantly running out mid-run. Yeah, this will for sure be the final run. I just want to see one Mines run today. And then I am 100% done. Why would I want to play Fortnite, though? <laughs> just like, there, I, I don't want to play a competitive game. The urge is in the negative percent. I also don't want to get the epic game launcher. There's there's a lot of reasons I don't want to play Fortnite. It, people people can enjoy it. Isn't the point? There's nothing wrong with the game technically. At least I assume there's nothing wrong with it technically. Just the genre does not match what I'm looking for. Do you love product? I love product. Yeah, like, as I said before, I'm not really into crossover stuff for the most part, so I, I just don't hold nostalgia for them. I just want the game to be solid at the end of the day. I'd rather be playing as a character that's more narrative-driven, unless it's multiplayer. Then multiplayer, it doesn't make sense. It's hard to have, like, a narrative-driven game that is multiplayer. Not that saying it's impossible, but... You know, at the end of the day, you gotta be realistic. Like, PSO is not very narrative-driven, from our character standpoint. <laughs> we we ignore the plot when we play PSO. But it's more like... Oh. I, I could never see myself going back to those kinds of games. I saw Spider-Man Incredibles Bomber Steam Dog, I clapped. It's like, I don't know. Stuff I don't care about. I, I am not the right age or audience, I don't think, for those things, for the most part. Hmm. I think I want Fire Scepter here. The question is, do I want... Oh, you know what? I should get a Ripley Merge. Hopefully I left one in the bag, or I'm going to feel very sad at a moment. Because that actually does hit certain thresholds that I need to hit. Okay, good. Phew, I swear it, I did not put that there, or else I'd have to go figure out who has it. I think Rafoe is my preferred choice here. Just have to go in your money? No thanks. Not interested in games as a live service. I didn't grow up with them. Internet was kind of iffy back then. I started on dial up. So there's things I've learned to enjoy with people online. But paying for a game afterwards? No thank you. There's a Musashi. Dragon got me. So sad. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. See, I'm more worried about the stream save. So, I would agree that's closer to what I'm looking for, but I remember that game is also pretty hard into the mature category. I don't know if people would be comfortable with me streaming something like that. It's not a bad idea to have games that are like uh, the... called CRPGs, but I forget what the full term is. But basically, the, the turn-based RPGs where potentially they have more narrative impact. You know, kind of like your classic Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, Icewind Dale, Torment Planescape, things of that nature. I think that would make sense. I think I do have some that are like that. Technically, I think also as well, uh, 
the people that made Baldur's Gate made Divinity Original Sin. That would be an example that would potentially... Oh yeah, of course we get mines now. Uh, potentially would be a game that I could play. That has a lot of story choices in it. I don't know how much you could censor that game and it still makes sense, to be honest with you. I played the original Divinity. Yeah, I, I played Divinity Sin 2. It's okay. Why would you think I hate the game? It's very cheesable. Yeah, like I would probably start with Divinity Sin 1. Divinity Sin 1 would just be me using telekinesis, though, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, that's most strategy games. I don't know what to tell you on that one, Poro. Grab this and go forward. Thank you, Rafoe. Yeah, without that, potentially I need more casts per target. Although I realized I forgot to summon the pan arms here. One second. Some of them real quick. Yeah, I mean like even game like even if you don't talk in like the 3D plane, it's usually whoever strikes first has an advantage. It's like that in every turn-based game. It doesn't even have to be like Boulder's Gate. Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't think the game was, like, super hard. I played on standard difficulty, I think. I don't remember having trouble with any of the core bosses. Ah, uh, see, you say that? I don't, I don't remember always having to go first. I'll be real with you. I mean, it was like... If they hit me, they hit me, but then it would be like, oh, okay, then they die to, like, elemental barrels. Where I just instant combo kill them with, like, Whirlwind or something. It doesn't really matter if I take pot shot damage. It matters more if they, like, no freeze, specifically. I don't know. I, d I didn't really find that game that difficult, overall. Again, it's it's very standard. I, like I don't know what to say. Like it's it's not something I would even rate in like the top twenty for hardest games of that genre. Right, but like, so you're so now I'm <laughs> now I'm confused. Did you play it on something other than normal, or are you just asking me to play it? I'm just curious. Because because if you're complaining the game is hard, but then you played on hard mode, I'm gonna be like, okay. I, I don't know what my takeaway from the conversation would be. But if you struggled on normal, I'm gonna be like... Uh... I don't know. I, I don't think I did at any point. I do agree that there's, like, a lot of traps with character builds. And that I don't like in Divinity Original Sin 1. Most of those games have that kind of problem. Where there's certain things that are just clearly better than others. So it kind of sucks, for example, when you play the first game, and if you try to make like a melee character, and then you just realize you're just gonna get better melee character with like none of the effort automatically in the story, it kind of invalidates your character. Do you know what I mean? Like, like that, that more is where I thought you were going with it, where I know I had originally played blind the first game, and then it was like, Oh, you're literally gonna give me a character that has stuff that they shouldn't have access to, but they get er access to it earlier than I can. Like, well, that sucks. <laughs> Just like, well, time to reset. We're playing mages. So I know I was not, like, ultra thrilled with that when we did that. I, I played that, like, briefly single player and co op. I just had people take over the game. Since that game does allow co op.
Yeah, I mean, like, you're just... I feel like you're just naming common complaints a high difficulty. I don't think it's, like, specific to that game. It just sounds like you haven't played a lot in the genre. Like, 9 times out of 10, hard mode in most games will just mean... Teehee, we raised their stats, have fun. Which is, like, some people like that. I don't usually do it. There's some that will take that extra mile and will go, like, okay, we're gonna rework all of their behavior, or we're gonna give them brand new abilities, but that's more like the exception than the norm. Like, I can only think of a handful of games that would do that offhand. Yeah, this is the only downside. She is terrible at killing this enemy. There we go, finally got the shock. She can kill everything else in here pretty easy, but just not that. Yeah, I mean, those games also punish you for doing single builds. As I said before, this is not... I'm just gonna say it's not new or specific to that game. Yeah. I mean, like, I'll give an easy example. Fire Emblem does that. I, that's why I don't enjoy the higher difficulties. Or, like, I'll play the equivalency of, what's it called, Insane? So there's, like, Insane Plus. And then Insane Plus is like, oh, did this character have this random passive? GG. It's like, oh, you did, did you need the Paladin to actually kill something here? We're gonna give the, the character with his counter weapon the ability to just kill him instantly, GG. Like, oh, guess I gotta reset. Oh, I mean, it's just like... It's not specific to that game. I know what you're talking about. Just kind of unfortunate. But that's why I don't see the need to do it. So instead I would view it like, if you find the game easy, then just go through and just enjoy the story. Sometimes it's not about the game being really hard in combat. Because I, I think that's my takeaway with RPGs in general. The point is that people should be able to clear the story for people that want to do the story. And if it's like slightly undertuned, it's unfortunate. And that's why you'll bump it up for your personal preferences. But honestly, at the end of the day, like if you're going to play like a Final Fantasy, you're generally never playing those games for combat. It's usually the game's worst part. It's unfortunate. I would say maybe that's a little less true as you go more towards like traditional tabletop, where it's more about character builds. But once you basically have what I'll call the I win combo, you win. Like, it happens in that genre. In Divinity Original Sin 1, it was telekinesis and the infinite weight containing container so that way you could just put a million heavy objects into one thing and one shot the entire game <laughs> like there's always an exploit I, like every game has it it's not unique to that one it's funny it is really funny winning divinity original sin one only using telekinesis just just drop the giant death barrier on them and laugh at them yeah, I don't care if the candy wean runs, there's nothing interesting on orange ID there. So, yeah. But I mean, that's that kind of goes back to more, like, I don't enjoy, like, Fire Emblem in general. Like, I play it to pass time, but, like, I, I've realized that there's other game series I could play. So I, I haven't gone back to it since... I want to say... Hates was the name of the game. That story was so bad that I actually just quit. I, I quit mid-run. I was just done with it. I wasn't even stuck. I was just like, are we seriously giving in to the Ganondorf character? Is that the plot of this version of the game that I picked up? Yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> just like, I, I've seen all I need to see. It. I don't know in what magic world my character thinks this person's a good person. And I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hard pass on the rest of the game. Thanks. Yeah, I'm not surprised. 
I mean, I think even Boulder's Gate is like that, where you could just have like a million death barrels and kill people with death barrels. There's there's always something to exploit. As I said before, it's not unique to like Divinity Original Sin. It's more like a genre. I don't know if I want to say issue. We'll take quirk. So many of these enemies, Rip. Oh, speaking of which, what I wanted to check. Is it in like a different room? I do a quick little check in this room. Nor big dumb, pretty much. Alright, so we'll wrap up this quest. I have some games to potentially look into the future. Or to look at in the future is what I meant to say. Yeah, I'm not sure where it is. I'm sure somebody on a forum has posted how to hit the switch. It's definitely intended for you to not be able to find it, but I'm pretty sure we have hit the switch before. I just don't know where it is. If it's like really deep in a wall and you can't see it. This is where you would take like a quest editor. I would love to see this quest in the quest editor to understand where this thing is. In the meantime, I might as well spam fireball. Yeah, sadly, I don't think this leads to the room that I was hoping to get, which has, uh, I think it's 30 Chaos Springers. Which is a lot to kill as a force, but as I said before, when they have half health and they take like almost literally like 80 to 100% more damage, but no, more than that, like 400% more damage, much easier. I think this sadly just leads the mines too, not where I want to go. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, this is the boss I do not want to do as Faux New World, unfortunately. So we'll end here. What a shame. Did not get the path I was looking for, but hey. At least we got to see a quick look to see if it was in the hallway or something silly. That would have amused me if we did go back and it was just waiting there in the hallway. Like, gotcha! <laughs> but oh well. But yeah, I think it's just kind of like one of those things in general where... I could maybe see us playing and going back with it and doing some story choices. But like, uh... The equivalency of the computer tabletop RPG is not a bad idea. There's a couple that I've not played before. So my only concern would just be more about difficulty than I would be, say, about enjoyment. I'm just trying to make sure chat has a good time picking some uh, story options as we go through. It's making like a ton, a ton of choices does slow it down. There's kind of like the delicate balance of finding like the right game for Twitch. You're not on a time limit. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But anyway, let's chat. So I think overall, from the standpoint of PSO, we got to see the Dropbox across a few different quest types. Uh, we got to at least take it to the big grass assassin room so we could see that it had pretty minimal impact on visual clutter in fact it helped isolate of the 40 to 50 boxes which ones were actually relevant we messed around a little bit with the i guess the text for misses and things like that we didn't see the one or resist sadly We had everything else there. Apparently, you can also change the color of the text of the different attributes for some reason. So I can make the, uh, like, native or, or dark and things like that different colors for some reason. So I guess that's interesting, I suppose. I could make Rafoli look like a total mess. It would probably break the game. We could ex experiment with just making Rafoli 
shoot out like 30 million particles <laughs> just lag the game out or something we'll see though it might be a future experiment but for now i have some games to consider i think i may or may not look at crowd control for some options it's one of those ones where how far of a classic game do you go like do, do we go all the way to nes snes I definitely, I think PlayStation 1 is just kind of like the sweet spot for me. There are definitely a lot of improvements on PlayStation 3. I know PlayStation 3 does get some bad rep, but honestly, like where PS2 was trying and failing to figure out what gamers wanted in modern games, PS3 kind of cleaned those up. Just kind of unfortunate that uh, a lot of the classics just kind of died off as companies merged. There's not quite like a Chrono Trigger level game on some of these other systems. Like, there's good RPGs. I don't know if they're, like, that good. It's, it's, quite, it's quite a tall order, I guess is the best way to frame it. But anyway, that's a topic for another day for us to discover and find the answer to. But for now, let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. If you did watch this point in the video or the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. And hopefully we'll see you in the next PSO video.